Hey guys, welcome to a new live session from NZ Poké Guy. Today I'm alone. Yes, we lost Laura in the meantime, just because, you know, that's the fifth time we attempted to do this live session this morning. She decided to give up. She has enough of YouTube and she doesn't want to give it more time. So we will get her back next week. Uh, I'm joking, she just had uh, things to do at 9 o'clock and it is 9 o'clock right now. But since we only were live for about half an hour, I decided to restart this one and come hang out with you guys for a little bit longer. Anyway, we've got things to talk about. We've got, uh, you know, some new information from the, from the, the you know, Ministry of Quarantines and all this kind of thing, the vaccination stuff. I do have much more news that we talked about. So I thought, you know, it would be a good place like any other to be able to talk about it um, together anyway. And uh, yeah, if you do have some questions about traveling in New Zealand, feel free to uh, pop them in the comment. It's just going to be me, so it's going to be maybe a little bit slower today. But, you know, uh, we, it's going to be a bit more of an intimate uh, live session together. I may even uh, want to attempt to put the live... Uh, no, I, I won't be able to do that myself, should I? Uh, maybe I can wait. If I do that, is there a way I could actually put you guys in the live chat in there? Uh, tools, I think there is. Uh, no, I can't remember where it was. Uh, docs, maybe. No. There was a way I could put the live chat, but I, I will do that next time. I will work on doing this one next time so I can put your live chat just right there. Anyway, so yeah, all your questions uh, for, about traveling in New Zealand, go ahead. I'm here. And in the meantime, I'm going to be talking about... Uh, Ministry of Quarantine. And I know Laura's not here. I'm very sorry about that. She had to go because, you know, trying five times to do it, make this live session work, sadly, it's just, it's just too bad for her. All right, cool. So the first thing I thought I'd be doing is that while you guys are getting started with some questions and everything, uh, and even just saying, hi, oh, we have Seth Miss, he's back. Here you go. Sam, just come, go ahead, you know, ask your travel questions now. It's going to be a bit more of an intimate live session. And uh, JK says, I asked a question in the last live chat before it went down. Would you be able to ask it again? Because it went down and so I lost uh, all of the information right here. So if you could ask that question again, that'd be absolutely lovely. In the meantime, let's talk about the uh, new uh, Ministry of Quarantine steps, which have been announced by the government. So the, I'm going to uh, highlight them into three different steps. So step one will start around November 8th. And uh, there's going to be a reopening of the borders for low-risk travelers, allowing them to bypass uh, the, uh, the managed isolation quarantine system. And this will be for travelers from the South Pacific Islands. So we are including Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, Tokelo. Um, and well, now Tonga, we kind of send them a case. So maybe there's going to be, uh, there's going to be some uh, extra conditions for Tongans. But that's the first step into being able to bypass MIQ if your country is very, very COVID safe. Now, these two other countries, Cook Islands and uh, Nui, which already have existing uh, arrangements with New Zealand, travel arrangements with New Zealand, and those won't change and they're going to keep those ones. Um, then we're having step two that's going to be starting on November the 14th. And uh, so... The MIQ stays will start gradually to, move, gradually to move from 14 days to only 7 days. Um, and the cost of the stay will be halved. So currently it's about 3,100 New Zealand dollar for an adult alone. And so it's going to go down to 1,550 New Zealand dollars for an adult alone or something around that range. Uh, the ar arrivals will be tested on this day 0, day 3, day 6. And they will also uh, undertake a rapid antigen test before leaving uh, the uh, managed isolation quarantine. And they will also have to isolate at home for around three days and get a PCR test uh, on day nine and wait at home until you get the result and then they'll be allowed in the community. And then the step three will be starting around the first quarter of 2022. So that's January, March and February. So January, February and March 2022. So around that range, there will be travel arriving will move toward more home isolation. So again, all that mostly just apply to uh, to resident coming back to your home. Right. And so uh, this will only happen once New Zealand has transitioned to this uh, uh, green light system like you know red light uh, orange light and green light system so that's when New Zealand has reached 90% vaccination around 
and the duration of the home quarantine will depend on uh, uh, many factors depending on the origin of the travelers and, and the current state in New Zealand and all these things. So yeah, so that's just a bit more understanding on that and just kind of a way to get started with this live stream while you guys are coming up with some questions. Cody says, well, how was the rest of your long weekend? That was pretty good. We actually did a lot of planting, weirdly enough. Uh, but yeah, so uh, at this time of the year right now, I do know that in some parts of the world, it's, it's autumn and you start getting like, you know, it start getting cold and wet and everything like that. But in New Zealand, it's spring. So that's the best time to work on your veggie garden. So we did work on our veggie garden. So we did a lot of that, which was quite fun. And uh, yeah, I'm expecting the first barbecue of the season to start to, to you know, to, to start soon. So hopefully that'd be nice. And the long weekend was last weekend when we celebrated Labor Weekend, which is basically the public holiday in New Zealand. Uh, if you guys are not aware of what that is, the public holiday that celebrates laborers. And it's, yeah, I don't know what Labor, labor Weekend is. Okay, so we have Jay Kaz that says, where is the good place to find a modest house to purchase a three or two, a three bedroom, two bathroom in say the 200 to 250 um, thousand USD range? Or is it possible to buy a lot and build from scratch with that budget? You won't be able to buy a lot and build from scratch on that budget whatsoever. So uh, I will I, I will estimate that it's about 400,000 New Zealand dollars, right? That's kind of what I will estimate. This will literally be the lowest price house you can find in New Zealand at this time. So it would be somewhere on the South Island. I do not know of any places on the North Island that you would be able to find a house for that price uh, at all, right? Um, the most derelict and small houses around the Auckland area go for more than a million dollars at the moment. Um, so it will be somewhere on the South Island. Um, and since I'm not a real estate agent, I don't really know much about that. I will be you know, well-used house. It wouldn't be something kind of fancy and everything. Um, yeah, we've seen some houses even just around where we live right now, they're all at about a half a million dollars and they are kind of house that were built in the 70s, a government house built in the 70s with a new coat of paint on it and they go for about half a million at the moment. Um, okay, B plus N says, Jcas, maybe the only place will be Greymouth. Yep, somewhere in the South Island, yep. Uh, you will probably only be able to buy a lot without a house for that price. Now you may be able to find like one of those really old old houses, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that would be you'll have to hunt really hard. It is really one of the lowest budget you can and, and like uh, you know kind of prepare yourself for. I will strongly, strongly advise for you to save more and come with at least twice more money because. Like that, if you just just have that, you have no money for car, for living, for nothing, right? So you definitely do need more money with that. But again, we're more of a travel channel here, so yeah. Cole says, "True spring, uh, true spring is a great time for uh, to grow." Um, me protesting, to grow. Me protesting weekends. What? Uh, say should be longer uh, from West Oakland. Yeah, well, yeah. Now nah, the weekends always should be longer. Sam to me say it's buffering, so see you later. Is it still buffering, guys, or is the quality a little bit better now? Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully things are getting uh, better with this live session. We tried different things. We restarted the router. You know, it has been it has been challenging to be to be live with you guys lately. Uh, it hasn't been um, it hasn't been smooth, but hopefully, hopefully this is for the best. You know, we are trying to make those live sessions a bit more entertaining for you guys, a bit a bit better. So yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So the other big piece of news, so while you guys are coming up with some more questions, the other big piece of news this week was the fact that some workers at the border, so, you know, the, the New Zealand borders is now employing thousands and thousands of people to keep the border safe, uh, making sure that all the uh, quarantine processes are, you know, followed. And, you know, it, it basically much more of a of a you know manpower intensive process now, so there's been a big uptick of much much more workers working at the border right now, and uh, yeah, some of them were allowed to work despite not being uh, getting the Pfizer vaccine, which is quite um, quite new for New Zealand because the Pfizer Pfizer uh, Pfizer was vaccine was literally the only that's a terrible word. Can that call them something easier? Anyway, uh, so that was the only vaccine that was allowed in New Zealand for the longest of time. And there's three vaccines that were basically kind of allowed. If you got them overseas and you came to New Zealand and you end up working at the border, they're still recognized as you are vaccinated. And those vaccines were the Moderna, the Astra Z, and the Janssen. So here you go. Those three vaccines may be recognized here in New Zealand. 
Okay, Kone tell me that, uh, yeah, it's buffering a little. Uh, well, hopefully, okay, you know, I'm going to do something to try to stop the buffering. I'm, gonna I'm going to go into my settings right here, and I'm going to reduce the bitch rate. So I was at 500 bitch rates. I'm now at 400. Okay, maybe that's going to work better, hopefully. Okay, uh, Biblosen says, have you been to Elms in, to the Elms in Toranga? What's your experience if you have been? No, we haven't been. Uh, Laura, have we been to the Elms in Toranga? Sorry? Have you, have you been to the Elms in Toranga? Elms. No, no. No, no, I know what it is. Oh, yeah? So Laura hasn't been there either. Uh, yeah, so she has a friend that went over there. Uh, it's like a little bit of a historical uh, homestead. And no, she hasn't been there. So sadly, no information from her, all the way far away from, you know, talking with home and uh, and me. No, we haven't been there. But there's a lot of really cool things to do in Toranga. Have you done the dolphin swimming in Toranga? It is so good. It's the only, I mean, let's just talk about that dolphin swimming in Toranga for a second, right? It is literally the only dolphin swimming in New Zealand where you would actually be holding onto a metal bar from the boat and they're going to move the boat kind of slowly so you get to actually swim with dolphins because most of the time when you swim with dolphins, you basically kind of splish splash in the water and the dolphins decide to kind of come nearby or not, right? But at that point, uh, when you do this this one with the boat, right, they literally come really up close to you and they kind of they get to swim with you and you have so much more of a longer experience with it. It's such a fantastic way to do dolphin swimming. So if you get a chance to do that experience in Tonga, it's really, really, really awesome. Anthony Comstock says Morena from Rodeo, California. If you guys don't know what that means, Morena means good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language. Um, if you guys feel like hitting the like button, by the way, for, you know, just to reward the fact that I'm taking some extra time to uh, hang out with you guys because we weren't able to do the live session long enough uh, this time, that'd be really lovely. Um, you know, hitting the like button is always, always really nice. There's 10 of you guys currently watching. Two likes. Come on. Okay, we're having um, a B plus and it says, no, I haven't been either. Just planning to go and see if it's worth going. Yeah, I mean, those little homestead are always kind of like the thing which are a little bit at the bottom of our list, which much more like, you know, the kind of outdoor and kind of adventure kind of uh, things. So, yeah, it's not always the thing that we kind of prioritize on doing. Uh, you know, if we have to choose between, you know, in Toranga, like climbing the mountain, swimming with dolphins and going to visit the home homestead, we usually will more visit that. There is also the Macklin Falls. It's really awesome to go there. Have you been to that little park, B plus N? That would be really awesome to, to go there. Oh, yeah, we have Cole that says I'm giving him a like. That's awesome. Thank you, mate. Amjad says, what kind of things should be avoided in New Zealand for new visitors? We have a full video about that, actually, on the channel, which is uh, it's kind of really awesome. We drew from our, um, our experience of being in New Zealand and we, we basically think uh, it, it, it's like the mistake that we, we should avoid. So in order to find this video, you go on our channel and on the search bar, you're just going to type mistake New Zealand or, or you can just type on Google mistake. Uh, so on YouTube, you type mistake New Zealand and then NZ Pocket Guide. And we have a whole video of like us for 15 minutes talking about all the mistakes that we've been doing in New Zealand. Uh, you know, and it's, it's kind of it's kind of cool. It, it was a very fun video to actually record um, and to kind of look back and like the thing that we've done that were really different. But yeah. It's kind of cool. Like there's different, uh, definitely a different kind of mishmash of cultures. Like uh, last night, Laura and I we went to um, have dinner with a bunch of friends um, at a friend's house, and there was like, uh, I'd say there were like five Kiwis and three of us that were not from uh, New Zealand. And uh, there was sometimes like some big clash of culture, you know, uh, when we were playing some games and everything like that. And it's kind of like, that's that's not an expression. We've never heard of this thing before. And so, yeah, so it's, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. So, yeah, if you uh, still have some questions, guys, just go ahead, right? I'm here to answer all your questions, especially about traveling in New Zealand. And, uh, yeah, there's a couple of people that just joined in right now. So that's really awesome. Thank you, guys, for popping in and saying hi. And, uh, yeah, as soon as there is no more questions coming up, I'll uh, just uh, stop this live session and hopefully we'll get uh, back next week with... Uh, uh, you know, a smoother live session. It cannot be worse. 
Kuni says, how was Nugget Point? Uh, we really enjoyed Nugget Point. I know if you watched our video of us going to Nugget Point, but there is a video as part of New Zealand's Biggest Gap here. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I will. The one thing I will say is that you've got to pick your time of the day to go visit Nugget Point, right? Just because I feel that it's so much better at sunrise than any other time, right? So it's kind of like these things when you want to wake up at dark, you know, and make your way over there. It's not like the longest walk whatsoever, right? It's a super short walk to get there. It's so well maintained because it's such a popular walk as well. Like you don't need any like fitness level or anything like that, right? I mean, it's easy as. And uh, over there, you know, have really fantastic uh, views and pictures and everything. But I feel like it's really kind of these things where it's going to be crowded at sunrise. And it, it's fine, you know, for the rest. You know, there's a bunch of little rocks and everything. It looks really nice. But it's really the thing that you need to time super, super, super well to, to get there. Uh, Adil says, I see that Whitbix had hijack uh, Laura's position for the remainder of this live stream. Yeah, I, I find it funny to put Whitbix right here instead of Laura. Uh, nice, nice that you noticed it, Adil. I really appreciate that. So yeah, Laura had to pop out because it was past nine o'clock and she has commitment and she's an adult. I, I have time to hang out with you guys. I'm not an adult. So uh, so yeah, I did put Whitbix right here. The problem with that is that Whitbix is much less talkative than Laura and therefore it is much harder for me to go back and forth between the live chat and everything and keep you guys entertained. So I end up drinking quite a lot. I've done a full bottle. So yeah, but yeah, keep on popping with all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. I'm here to answer all of them for you. As I said, I started a new uh, video series, which is my 101 favorite things to do in New Zealand. Now, there's a bit of a caveat right here is that some of them that I included in there, I just thought they were really awesome things to do, even if they were not necessarily my personal favorite thing. I think it would not be fair to not put them on there. So I did try to make it a little bit more mainstream to make sure that all of you guys really enjoy it. Anthony Comstock says, stay safe, but I'm here until the end. Oh, that's really nice. I probably will hang out with you guys until there's no more question or until by like, you know, maybe another 20 minutes or something like that. So yeah, just make sure that you guys have enough time to ask all your questions as well, because I just want to make sure that everybody has the time to come and ask their question. Um, Cody says, I'm so excited for more of the 101 uh, seasons. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of uh, a lot of things to do in New Zealand. And I was quite surprised when making my list uh, for doing this 101 best thing to do in New Zealand, right? I started doing the list and in my mind, right, in my head, I was really thinking, I was like, you know, I'm going to reach like 30 and I'm going to have to start struggling. In fact, I was actually, I told Laura at the beginning, I said, I want to do my favorite 50 things to do. And I said, no, 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 you do 100. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do my 100. And then she said, no, 101 is a best, better number. Go figure. So then I ended up doing 101. But uh, when I started writing down, like, which one were my favorite, or, you know, what I did basically that I, I listed, like, I did piece of pieces of paper and I wrote each activity on a piece of paper and then I organized them, right? And, you know, the first one that comes to your head, they probably usually are the one that you're like, yeah, there's, there's a thing that's going to be quite on the top, right? That's the first thing I can think about, you know? Like, you're like, yeah, okay, it's going to be on top. I'm trying to be really spoiler free right here in explaining. Um, yeah, so, you know, I started writing everything down and I was really surprised that I actually ended up having more than 101 and I had to kind of remove a couple and, and uh, you know, because I kept on writing, writing, writing and I was like, you know, as a brother, like, wow, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was really, really shocked because I really did not think there was that much material to do that 101 list and uh, yeah, it came super easily to me as, as making the list. Then uh, I took the, the dining table and I had like all those little pieces of paper with all those activities and I started moving them around and everything. And that was that was a nightmare to try to be like, which one goes here? <laughs> and it's so arbitrary, it just it's heartbreaking. But you know, I, I hope that you guys understand that this 101 is more like all those things are really awesome, right? And I feel like I'm saying that in every introduction of those videos just because they really are. All right, uh, so we have Amjad that says, thanks, bro. Just the last word from you on the negative people um, recommend do not come to New Zealand. Yeah, honestly, New Zealand is mostly really good, right? There's a lot of people that said, oh, you shouldn't go to New Zealand, this and that. It's just clickbait type videos, right? New Zealand is really, really awesome. There is a couple of things that, you know, we have a couple of videos which are a little bit negative, like things that we wish we knew, knew, knew uh, things that we wished we knew before we came to New Zealand. Um, so that's that's kind of 
a little bit negative, like, oh, I wish I knew that. Um, and then mistake that you need to avoid. So we have those two videos and you will see that basically there's like two things which are negative and everything else is literally just fillers. I'm just being really honest with you. So yeah, New Zealand is pretty awesome. No need to panic too much. Fabio is here. He says, Morena, Robin, thank you very much. Um, uh, very much for joining us right now. You are you are joining us uh, in a catch up kind of video. So it's just me today, uh, just because Laura had enough. We attempted five times to be live this week. So yes, you're gonna mock us. I, I know, I know, uh, Fabio, you do enjoy, you do enjoy our misery. But yeah, uh, so I'm just doing a catch up right now to give you guys enough time to hang out with us. So I'm glad I, uh, you know, allowed you to hang out with me. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and Laura says hi. So here you go. Uh, to do, do where we are B plus and she said I enjoy hearing about your list of the 101 best things or at least the last 100 the last 11 so B plus said which one have you done out of those last 11 at least what you know have you done any of those those 11 ones or you know it's kind of also cool to what I, I really want people to comment on those videos and tell me what I kind of like their favorite so then I can do I really want to be able to do a video in like January when we have done all of those and actually put your guys uh, 101. So that'd be, that'd be really cool. Michael Stewart says, hello. How are you doing, Michael? Thank you for popping in. Hello, Michael. Oh, see, someone else says hi. That's pretty nice. My co-host said hi. Um, we have, uh, yeah, Michael says good for you. I don't know why, uh, you know, which one is it referring to, but I appreciate it. Okay, Bob Turner says, if you fly into Auckland after quarantine, MIQ, can you travel outside of Auckland or do you have to choose an area um, you are going to live in? So, Bob, at this moment, Auckland is, is in alert level 3, so there's not much travel between uh, Auckland and other regions. So you may want to wait until Auckland goes down a level and, and there is a, a, a cohesive level around the North Island and then you'll be able to leave the North Island. That'd be much easier. For instance, we currently do have some friends that uh, had to go to Auckland to, um, you know, for family uh, things. And uh, yeah, they had to go to Auckland right now. And they, uh, they stayed in Auckland for a certain amount of time. And now they kind of have to stay in Auckland until they can come back. We are living in central North Island. So we're not, we're in alert level two right now. So um, our friends won't be able to come back to us. So we've got to water the plants for longer. <laughs> uh, cool. Christian says, uh, hello, I used to live in New Zealand. Oh, cool. Where did you live in New Zealand and why did you live and where are you now? Give me some context. I enjoy that. And also, thank you for popping in again. I know you have popped in in other one of our, of our um, live sessions. Sorry. I thought about my water and then I lost my words, which happens sometimes. B plus N says, I have done some, but it gave me some ideas of what else to do. Um, cool. So what are, what would be like your favorite things to do in New Zealand? What's, you know, like, okay, let's say if I'm giving you a top five, B plus said, what will be your top five? Okay. Christian says, um, and just uh, want to go back to a visit. Oh, so you just want to go back and visit France. Can you make a guess of when the borders are going to open again? So if you are a resident in New Zealand, you, you can come and there has been some MIQ changes which may allow you to come back to New Zealand and have only about half the stay in MIQ, so about only half the seven days. I'd say that'd be safe to kind of start considering strongly to do that, uh, you know, probably just after Christmas, uh, after the Christmas periods. And that would be for like half the MIQ stay, but that's still going to mean you have to pay for MIQ stay and all of that. But yeah, then after the, the wider border opening, we don't see anything happening until like means. 2022 at the earliest and uh yeah it is gonna take a what oh what more water Laura. I can hear you talking you. about water so much. oh i have i have a bottle but yes yeah, nice uh so yeah uh so i think it's gonna it's gonna take a wee while until until that happens again and and if you're not like resident in new zealand it, it's it's gonna yeah, that, that means you have to wait that long in order to be able to come back like in a, in a smoother way. But if you're resident in New Zealand, you can kind of work the MIQ. And, 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 uh, if you are able to foot the bill, which, you know, is thousands of dollars. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Michael Stewart says, what are your two favorite New Zealand animals? Uh, okay, so my number one favorite animal is the New Zealand fur seal. 
that is for sure. If you have ever swimmed with seals, you will know that they are the best sea doggos in the world. Um, they have googly eyes, they're super playful in the water. You just have to go in the water, put your head in the water with your scuba stuff and just float and they're gonna come in and round and everything. And sometimes they kind of like come around and kind of like slap you a little bit to see what you are and everything. They are absolutely amazing. And for the rest of the time, if you see them on land, stay away from them and just watch them being the laziest living thing in the planet just kind of like literally just rolling a little bit in there and they look like if you've ever baked in your life you know you when you roll dough right well a seal or sea dogo as i like to call them are literally rolled dough on the rock lazing in the sun it is the perfect life i just love it i just love it it still seal stinks but yeah so that's by far my number one now, it's going to be controversial because obviously the kiwi birds are really awesome and everything. But I think my second favorite New Zealand animal is going to be the kea bird. It is the world's only alpine parrot. So they are parrots of the mountains. How cool is that? And on top of it, they are super playful as well. They come and steal part of your car, part of your lunch, part of your backpack. Um, you know, they're really kind of playful. Sometimes they literally just grab pebbles, fly above and toss them on cars. They just kind of like... They just find human peskies and decide to be peskies to humans. And I think they're really funny. So here you go. That's are going to be, maybe it's just for today, right? But they are going to be my two favorite New Zealand animals. The Kera parrot and the New Zealand fur seal or the sea doggo, as I like to call them. Good doggo. I want to scratch their belly. Never scratch the belly of a seal. I never cr scratch the belly of a seal because, you know, they're wild animals. Don't do that. But oh, I, would, I would love to have a pet seal. All right. Um, Christian says he's German. Nice. And Bibler said, said, my number one is Gannet Colonid, Cape Kidnappers in Hawke's Bay. That is really awesome. To be fair, they are an awesome bird as well. I, yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, it's a really cool activity to do. Um, have you been to the Muriwai Gannet Colony as well? I, I, I do agree with you that the, this, the Cape Kidnappers is a better um, a Gannet Colony, but just as a curiosity, have you been to Muriwai? If you guys don't know, Muriwai is nearby Auckland and there is a Gannet Colony there and you can see those um, beautiful birds. And just looking at the bird, it's actually a majestically beautiful animal. Like just so s sleek and just, uh, just oh, so, so amazing. It's, it looks like designed to perfect. And um, yeah, one time as well, if you guys have the chance to watch our video when we do well watching in Auckland, uh, if you get to watch that video, it's absolutely phenomenal because we saw a group of gannets actually hunting during that. So they're like shooting down the water to go catch some fish. And then there was whales and everything. It was absolutely phenomenal and we got to get a little bit of footage of that it's obviously all amateur level footage it's nowhere near what you will find on you know blue planet and everything like that but it is such an amazing thing that we got to do so if we get if you get to watch this video it's available on the channel just type like uh, Auckland Whale Watching and then NZ Pocket Guide or Auckland Whales and NZ Pocket Guide you'll find that video it's really cool there's dolphins there's whales and there's gannets I mean what a day out on the water that was awesome uh, so yeah, so Christian is not a New Zealand permanent resident, um, and he said he used to live uh, in Nelson to do a NCEA. Oh, cool! So he was studying in Nelson. That's cool. That's a really good place to study, mate. Uh, so I bet your backyard was the Abel Tashman National Park. I bet you've done a lot there. Okay, um, we have B plus, and I said number two. We'll be uh, so we're going through B plus N's uh, top five like best things to do in uh, in New Zealand. So number one was the Gannet Colony by B plus N. Then B plus N has for number two um, is Dubful Sounds because uh, they got to see dolphins. Yeah, Dubful Sounds is pretty awesome. Did when you do you went to Milford Sound? Did they do that thing when they turn off the engine of the boat and you have pure quietness and you just hear the the cacophony of the birds in the background? It's it's so awesome. But yeah, Dubful Sound is really 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 cool. Um, I'm surprised that um, you know your te main takeaway from Dubful Sound was dolphins. So we, we did get to see a, a bit of dolphins as well, but I feel like the majesticness and grandeur of the place was really my biggest takeaway from that full sun more than dolphins also maybe because we did see dolphins in a lot of other places in new zealand but yeah i'm looking forward to see you number three yet uh you number three a b plus n uh you may uh, you may end up keeping me live for quite a while until you do all your all your five of them because now i'm curious um bob turner said did new zealand tourism industry adapt to no international tourists 
uh, tourist, tourist operation busy with New Zealanders. Are uh, five star hotels empty? Okay, so did New Zealand tourism in industry adapt to no international tourists? Yeah, quite a few of them adapt, but a lot of them did collapse, sadly. Um, so, yeah. So, obviously, Laura and I, uh, our full job is to actually run a website called nzpocketguide.com, which is the largest travel guide to New Zealand. And, obviously, we also did rely quite a lot in international tourists because international tourists are usually people that do a little bit more research rather than when you're local, you usually go to places that you've heard of and everything. You go, you know, you visit friends and all these kind of things. So, it requires a little bit less research. So yes, a lot of tourism have adapted and uh, offered, you know, cheaper prices, simpler kind of uh, simpler kind of experience, or something a little bit more different, more adapted to the New Zealand market, something a bit more educational, for example, just all these kind of things. So yeah, all, all, and, and also kind of streamline different kind of channels of sales. So yeah, all, all, some of them have adapted, some of them sadly have collapsed. Um, the next part of your question is: Are tourist operation busy with New Zealanders? Well. But New Zealanders, when they travel around New Zealand, they tend to spend less money and want to do more free things. So some of the hot spots, such as, for example, the Tongariro Alpine Crossing, right? It's a big hike. Uh, it's probably one of the most popular hikes to do on the North Island of New Zealand. And Laura and I did it again last summer, you know, right in the heart of COVID. And it was busier than it was when we did it and there was no COVID time. So at that point, all the shuttle operators there, they were obviously definitely busy with New Zealanders. Um, and, and yeah, the hike itself was very busy with New Zealanders. Aside from that, a lot of other operations are very, very, very empty. So you have some, um, some operations such as some whitewater rafting companies, for example, which have adapted and they do a lot of school trips and all that kind of things, uh, which is quite cool. But if you go uh, more as a tourist and everything, well, rather than be eight people in a raft, you're probably going to be three, four at most uh, with your guides. And uh, yeah, it gives you more intimate experience, but I don't feel like there's many places which are literally really busy with tourists. Except obviously during the, 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 the peak time, which is going to be like labor weekends, that's like those four days where it's going to be really busy. Or you're going to have like the Christmas time where everybody is going to be really busy and, and many accommodation in, in some summer hotspots are already fully booked because no matter what it is, always fully booked at that time of the year. Uh, that was a good question, Bob. Um, okay, B plus N says, I haven't been to Murray Wai yet, but it's on the list. Okay, looking forward to number three coming up soon uh, from B plus N, I guess. Uh, yes, it is there. My number three is Abel Tasman. Uh, yeah, beautiful national park. Do you prefer doing a hike over there or the kayaking? And have you seen dolphins over there? There is a lot of dolphins hanging out around Abel Tasman. And my number... Four for B plus N is the Hamilton Gardens. Hamilton Gardens are fantastic. And also, they're free. That's always a good thing to do. And number five is Marlborough area on top of the South Island. Um, I need to travel around more. Oh, the Marlborough area is fantastic. Do you like it because of the wines or because of uh, more of the other things to do? Like around the Picton area, there's a Queen Charlotte's track. There's a Marlborough Sound. There's some really awesome things to visit there. So what kind of, what is your take in Marlborough? Uh, Michael Sewa says, um, this may be none of my business, but I have to ask, how are you able to pay all of the activities that you both did? Um, it, it's absolutely a fine question to ask. I, yeah, don't feel like you can't ask these kind of things. So uh, we obviously did a lot of activities. So we did uh, have a lot of savings before so that allowed us to be able to pay for not just the activity, but a lot of the expenses on the road. You know, you have accommodations and you have gas and all this kind of thing that did cost quite a lot of money. And uh, the next thing that happened is that we were already running uh, New Zealand's largest travel guide at that point. So we did know a lot of the people in the industry. I have been in New Zealand for 11 years right now, right? So I've I had a lot of contact there. So um, a fair amount of them, and I'd say about four out of five of them were actually just for us to do for free. So we didn't get paid by any of those activities, but we didn't have to pay for it. So that really helped us kind of uh, balance our budget right here. And this was... We basically did pay for it with all our hard work, right? We did build a website already. It just allows us to have like those extra pictures that we needed for the website and all these kind of things. So yeah, a lot of them. And that's why you can see at the end of the of the stuff, we actually did, do thank the company and we, we explain that. So yeah, it's, it's, no, it's no secret that a lot of them we didn't pay for. And that really allowed us to be able to show you guys that much. And I think it was a good exchange of goods, right? Uh, for them, they got us to kind of like tell them what we thought about the tour and you know some of them have made changes after uh, after the feedback that we gave them and um for you guys you get to see the experience you know uh, exactly how it is and you know we didn't really kind of 
hide much from it you know it's not like none of the videos are like promotional videos it's really us doing it and telling you what the experience really is and uh, yeah that's basically how, how we were able to pay for all of them but aside from that it's a lot of savings i mean uh, you know a year on the road like what we did like new zealand's biggest gap year does cost a lot of money um, and you know you got to decide buy a house or <laughs> do something as stupid as we did but you know it was part of it was part of our business we've done that uh we've, we run travel guides for new zealand uh you know this big travel guide nz pocket guide we've been running that for um well i think in two years it's gonna be a decade so here you go um for quite a long time and uh, yeah it's it's one of the perks of the job it really doesn't pay much uh you know to be quite honest laura and i have never earned um above minimum wage um, since we started this but it allows us to have the lifestyle lifestyle that we want and we are very frugal on the way we, we live you know like even here we you know we grow most of the stuff that we eat so here you go don't need to spend too much at new world all right um this thing is becoming much more intimate it's kind of interesting uh Fizen md says is new zealand started visitor visa from india no i uh, not at this moment sorry um but yeah, um, maybe, 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 you know, as I say, I want to give you a prediction. I don't want to just leave you say, just no. You know, hopefully, at the, la the second half of 2022, maybe things are going to start moving. But we, we don't see much moving just yet. Uh, Christian says, yes, Abel Tasman is really, really amazing. I've also been to Kahurangi. Oh, the Kahurangi National Park is really, really amazing as well. I do really like it. Have you seen that big sinkhole? That's one of the places in New Zealand that I haven't been in, like, you know, to actually go witness myself. And I really want to go see that big sinkhole in the Kahurangi National Park. Obviously, we've been to the Opera Arches and we've done quite a lot of other things there, but we haven't seen a big sinkhole. Have you seen it yourself? Um, Michael is responding to Fizen. Uh Okay. Gannett Gannett says, Cape Kidnappers is cool. Look at it. Be blessed and Gannett Gannett. You guys, you guys should hang out together. Uh, that definitely is, uh, is something you guys have in common. But yes, uh, yes, Michael Stewart, if you don't know about Cape Kidnappers, and you're more than welcome to check out on the channel, we do have... Sorry, just give me a second. Laura, are you going to do hot drinks at some point? Uh, if you want me to. Thank you. <laughs> my throat starts hurting a little bit as I'm talking about them. Uh, yeah, so uh, this, there's, you know, uh, by the way, there's 19 of you guys uh, watching. If you if you feel like hitting like, you know, for uh, for me doing this all oh, live session all on my own, you know, give me that pity like, that'd be nice. So, uh, Michael Stewart, if you don't know about Cape Kidnappers, it's a really awesome uh, place to visit. Uh, so, it is basically a, a big limestone kind of rock extending uh, off the shore of New Zealand. And in there, there is a big colony of gannets. And we're talking thousands. I mean, B plus N and gannet, gannet. Tell me, is there a number? Like, is there an official kind of number of like how many gannets is there? I feel like it may have been on the sign, but I can't remember from the top of my head right now. But yeah, so is there, um, is there an official number? But anyway, there's a ton of gannets over there. And the colony is absolutely fantastic so when you arrive there there's really not much protection there's like a little bit of a chain um that kind of basically show you don't pass this line and litty gannets will be uh will be nesting within about 20 meters away from you and i'd say that's about 30 feet i that I, my conversion from meters and feet is not great it's just on top of my head um every single time on the website when we actually giving distance like uh, distances such as like miles and meters and everything we convert it for our american audience and every single time I actually have to use a converter, I cannot start doing it with my head. I do not know why it's something I cannot grasp. So in all our editorial stuff, everything that I write every time, I always have to do it manually. It's, yeah. Anyway, so you're really close to those gannets and they're just nesting just right here. And there's really like, I feel like there's thousands of them. Guys, just tell me in the comment if you, like how many you think there is, but yeah. So there's really thousands of them and you, you hear like all the noise and, and all that. And so they're nesting there. So. Uh, when you have the, the, the babies there, they, they are brown, they're different colors, and you can see them, they just kind of do this movement with their, with their wings, and that's for them to start uh, uh, basically working their muscles and start basically building muscles in order to be able to fly, like, you know, you're not born with all the muscles, like, you know, as big as you need them, right? So they're basically doing Gannet Gym, which is kind of cool to watch. Also, uh, gannets are really affectionate birds. So you see both the male and the female on the, you know, in the nest and you can see them kind of interacting with each other. There's some like a 
uh, put the necks together, like our, our fiction signs and everything like that. It's really awesome. And sometimes even, and a behavior that I love watching from Gannets is that you see the male or the female. I, 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 I'm not able to kind of tell, but I, I, in my story, in my mind, it's the male. Um, they go they go to show, obviously, they, they go for a feed and everything, and they're going to feed the baby and everything. But sometimes they come back with like a, a bit of seaweed or something like something they found along the way, right? And they give it kind of as a present to their partner. And I find that so damn cute. It is so cute. So I really love that. And in fact, on articles of the best thing to do for Valentine's Day in New Zealand. So on NZ Pocket Guide, we have a we have an article on the best thing to do in New Zealand for Valentine's Day. I insisted that Laura added uh, the Ghanaian colony on there because I did find that just so cool and so cute uh, to watch and see. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about Ghanaian so much, but here you go. Uh, love those Ghanaians. Where are we on? We have uh, Rasky that says, Good morning. How are you doing, Rasky? Thank you for popping in. It's really nice to have you on board. Uh, we have Fizan that says, Thanks a lot, sir. Christian that says, I have not seen it, but I went swimming in August in Lake Lily. Oof. In August? Brave? V very, very bold and brave. I, I'm not... Uh, no, I will not do that. But okay, uh, so if you guys don't know why I have this reaction, August is the middle of winter in New Zealand, and the South Island gets cold in New Zealand in winter. If I may, if I may, just you know, wow. Uh, okay, uh, we are having Michael Stewart says no problem. I don't know the context, but yeah, uh, you're most than welcome. And then we have Chandler Sharp that says seeing the Gannet dive is incredible. It is really amazing. And it's so amazing how, I, I don't even get, like, they start from so high. How do they know the fish is there? How do they target? Do they literally just dive and then hope they're going to be able to catch something? Or do they target a specific fish and go for it? And there's so many of them. It looks like a bombardment. Like, it it's absolutely is incredible. Uh, I, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal spectacle. Why is this live stream all about Gannett? Should I just turn the name of the live stream and say it's Gannett in New Zealand live stream? I mean, I feel like... <laughs> I don't mind it. I just feel like we're very Gannet centric today, guys. Um, which I don't mind. I, I guess uh, B plus N doesn't mind either. And Gannet, Gannet. I mean, that's your name, Gannet, Gannet. That obviously you're gonna go for, you know. Um, Michael Stewart said, "Did I just hear microwave?" Yeah, I think Laura is making me a hot cocoa. So yeah, here you go. I think I'm getting a treat right now because I'm doing the whole live session on my own. Uh, cool. What else do we have? Christian says. Yes, we had snow over, over over the night, but also no shower, and so why not? Okay, so you decided, I'm on the South Island. It's snowing and it's winter, and I cannot take a shower. I wouldn't go one day without a shower and just keep on moving on. I'm literally going to jump into a glacial alpine lake. That is a go-to I, I wouldn't have made, but okay. Uh, you're way braver than I am. Um... Okay, B plus N says, where else is there to see gannets besides Cape Kidnappers and Murray Y? Well, uh, you know, as I said, uh, the, the, you know, we got really lucky to see gannets during the whale watching in, um, in Auckland. That was quite nice. Uh, where else? I think, I think we, have a, we have an article on NZ Pocket Guide, so I can't, I can't recall from the top of my head, but I feel there are some other places that we've seen gannets in New Zealand. More than you can see gannets in uh, Farewell Spit. Okay. Uh, which is the top? Here of the you South go. Island. Farewell Spit, uh, top of the South Island. Oh yeah, that's true. I remember now. Yeah. So Farewell Spit. So you've got to take a, a bus tour to get there. Uh, it's a protected area. It's actually more protected than the national park, Farewell Spit. And uh, so yeah. So in order to go to Farewell Spit, by the way, cheers guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So I feel like I'm really behind on the on what I'm seeing right here. But anyway, so farewell speech is basically a big sand speech, which is uh, on top of the South Island of New Zealand. And it's a very, very, very protected New Zealand. So one of the only way to get there is to take this big red bus tour. And you can see us doing that as an activity in New Zealand. And in there, there is a Gannett colony as well. Um, so yeah, good call, Laura. See, if, if she's not here, I, 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 am, I am no man. Without my woman, I am no man. All right, uh, but that was a good question, B plus N. Uh, <laughs> okay, I see now on the replay that Laura is just bringing me the hot cocoa, so that's how far behind the replay is, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. 
Uh, okay, Michael Stewart says, somehow I have very good hearing. And it looks like this microphone is working very, very well. Anthony Comstock says, on the poll from the last episode today, what one did, uh, which one did win the poll? So the problem with the fact that the last session bugged is that I don't get the result on the poll until I go back to it. But um, it was between uh, Exquisite and Ravishing. That's the two one that people were voting for the highest. So there were the two one. So people think that Laura's haircut is either Exquisite or Ravishing. And Horrible was dead last with like something like 11% of the vote. So here you go. Uh, oof, that nice hot cocoa. So this used to be, that's backpackerguide.nz right here on the mug. That used to be the name of the NZ Pocket Guide website before we switched brands. And uh, we called it NZ Pocket Guide. So here you go, a tidbit of history with you guys. And so it used to be all orange and now it's blue and yellow. But we kept the mug because we don't waste things. We're not like, oh, we rebranded everything and now we're going to toss everything. No, we kept the mugs. Uh, okay. We have Fabio that says, sorry guys, I missed a little bit of the stream um, as I had to take a call. Oh, you're very welcome. Take your time. Says, um, has there been the question of the day? Uh, when does the New Zealand border reopen? Yes, it already has been asked. But yeah, I, I keep on saying, I think it's uh, the, la you know, the second half of 2022. We're going to start things seeing significantly moving. I don't see it happening too much beforehand. Um, cool. Chandler Sharp says, what are your recommendations for Taranaki? Oh, there is, there is, Taranaki is pretty awesome. I do really like the place. So Goblin Forest, there's a really nice walk there. So it's in the Mount Egmont National Park, so the Taranaki National Park. So I'm going to get started straight away with the National Park itself, right? So Taranaki, if you guys don't know, that is on the east side of the North Island of New Zealand. That's a place that a lot of tourists forget about. Um, one of the main features that you can't miss I mean, hell, you see Mount Taranaki when you do the Tongariro crossing. So if you're in the middle of the North Island, you will see that big mountain. So you won't be able to miss it. So in the middle of the Taranaki area, there is the Mount Taranaki. And this is also known as Mount Egmont. And there is the Egmont National Park in there. Exploring the Egmont National Park is really a lot of fun. We have multiple videos of us doing that. Uh, Goblin Forest, for, Forest is really fantastic. Uh, climbing Mount Taranaki on, uh, all the way on the top in winter with a guide and the proper equipment is a phenomenal experience to do, so I recommend that. Uh, the name of that lighthouse in Taranaki is... Who? I can't remember. The Egmont Lighthouse, I think. Yes, Egmont Lighthouse, really cool to do. Uh, the, alongside the Surf Highway 45. So, if you're in Taranaki, take yourself a day and drive the Surf Highway 45. We did that during uh, New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, and there's a lot of really awesome pit stops along the way. Beautiful coastlines, awesome surf area, that's why it's called the Surf Highway 45, and it's really cool. Um, uh, uh, Egmont Lighthouse, which is Cape, I think it's called Cape Egmont Lighthouse, and it it looks really awesome because you have the lighthouse, which is like striped, like red and and white, and you get the the Taranaki just in the background. It looks really awesome. But one of the awesomest things to do then when you do this Surf Highway 45 is to go to something called Koru Pa. So a pa site is an is an old Maori kind of. Um, uh, a, a settlement, and there is uh, along the Surf Highway 45 Koru Pa, which is from what I've witnessed, one of the best preserved uh, par sites in New Zealand. Because usually Maoris in New Zealand, they were not using stone to do any of the settlements. They were using wood. And for that reason, there is not much remnants of most of the par sites because, well, wood disagrees and they tore your way really fast and it just becomes, you know, dirt. And so, you know, the, the par site was still there, but there's not much things to see there. There's just the mana left. And so if you go to the Korupa, you actually see quite a few things left. And so it's really cool to see that because you don't see much of the very early um, New Zealand human history uh, left in New Zealand. Aside from that, in the greater uh, Taranaki area, the town of New Plymouth is really cool to hang out at. Uh, you know, there's really awesome uh, museums such as the Te Puke Ariki Museum, uh, which has a lot of things, including uh, beautiful moa bones, which I loved seeing. That was really nice. And if you want a good giggle, uh, you know, head to Stratford. There is something called a Glockenspiel. And I'm just going to let you search on YouTube. Just type Stratford and then NZ Pocket Guide. 
watch the video. It's just a good giggle. It's really just for the fun as you go there. If you have a little bit more time in Taranaki, I'll say head north and uh, start tackling the Forgotten World Highway, which is really awesome as well. All right, that's a very detailed answer for you, Chandler. Uh, but if you have any follow-up questions on any of those, go ahead. I'm going to take a sip of that hot drink. It's a damn fine hot cocoa. Uh, Michael Stewart says, are you fine with a 12, year, 12 years old on here? Um, just checking. Um, if you're 12 years old, can listen to the word, it's a damn fine hot cocoa. I think this is as high as gonna, as gonna I'm usually quite good at self-censoring myself. So yes, that will work. Woo, Fabio sent us a donation of five euros. Whoop, whoop. And what, 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 is, the, what is the little rack? Number one. Okay, there's a little fox, um, you know, saying number one. Fabio, you're always so nice with us. Oh, so lovely. Um, you know, that's thanks to you that we did the new studio, right? Do you remember that story, right? You, so you gave us a donation last time of five euros. And I passed the threshold I was saying to Laura, as, as soon as we make that much money on YouTube, I'm going to have to re-rig this studio and try to make it look nicer and everything. And that's, that's what happened. And then we have a table to put our drink on and everything like that. So yeah, you're the best. You are awesome. Um, when we get enough money, we'll have a screen right here instead of that frame in order to uh, in order to be able to display your comments and everything like that. Yeah, I think it would be quite fun. Or even photos and everything, things that I can, I can talk about and everything. Okay, B plus N says, can you talk about getting a haircut in New Zealand? I haven't gotten a haircut since I got to New Zealand. <laughs> well, Laura, Laura, I don't know if you saw the previous session, uh, but Laura just got a haircut right here. It's damn expensive. All right, getting a haircut in New Zealand. If you're a guy, you go to something called a barber. It doesn't cost too much. It's about $20, $25. And uh, yeah, they use the clippers like uh, most of the place. And then... Uh, Couple of uh, pieces of scissors, ta 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 ta, and then uh, yeah, it's kind of easy. I don't know much about haircuts, so I usually arrive and I say, "Don't make me look too ugly." That's literally as much, uh, you know, as much context I give the hairdresser, and then they do what they want with my head, and then it looks like this. I don't know if it's okay, uh, but yeah, it's usually it looks pretty terrible, which is why I wear hats. Uh, for girls, it's it's damn expensive. So one time. Laura wanted to get a haircut in Auckland and she went and this it's a chain of kind of like hairdresser and everything and it's called Rodney Wayne and she walked in and she asked to get a, a haircut and appointment and, and everything and say yeah we can take you at 2pm and everything she kind of booked the appointment and then I said Laura do you mind asking for the price and they asked her for 180 New Zealand dollars I was like hell no we're gonna find another place and she agreed with me because there is an ungodly amount of money to ask people for haircuts so right now at the moment, uh, so the haircut that Laura got uh, did cost her about sixty dollars, uh, sixty New Zealand dollars uh, for the haircut. So she used to have long hair, and I was like shortening it and thinning it, and I don't know, layering it, and, and all these kind of things, all the product and all the shabang. But we also do live in kind of an isolated place in New Zealand, so expect to pay between eighty to hundred dollars usually. And if you go to those really fancy places that you shouldn't go to, you'll pay like one hundred eighty or two hundred dollars, which is shocking. Um, but yeah, that's as much as I can tell you about getting a haircut in New Zealand. Um, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Fabio says, have you talked about why you have switched the brand? Uh, you mean the NZ Poké guy to the, uh, to the, the, uh, the backpacker guy NZ? Yeah, I, I can definitely explain to you why. Um, so we started it as a, a guide mostly for backpackers, right? Lo and I were backpackers and we're like, you know what? There's not a good enough guide to New Zealand. We were not satisfied with the, the paper book guide that there were because, uh, you know, being working in the tourism industry even before that, I didn't know how often the writers came to New Zealand and how often it is actually updated with people on the ground and everything. And it's very, very rarely that they send people on the ground. Like, you know, very, I'm not going to bash our competitors and everything like that, but it's very rare that they send people on the ground. So we're not really satisfied with that. And, you know, we kind of say, okay, what about we decide to start a travel guide of our own? Little did we know how much work that is, but, you know. So we decided to start it as a, as a backpacker guide, right? And so that's what we started. But, you know, there is an estimated in the stats of New Zealand and everything. There is only about... 500, uh, sorry, uh, 50,000 backpackers coming to New Zealand every year, right? And literally on the first year that we started that website, we had 250,000 unique readers, right? So we were already well beyond that. And so it was just kind of branding ourselves onto something that just we were doing way more than that anyway. 
So, you know, we kept the brand for a couple of years, but then it was time like, okay, let's do something. Let's have a name which is a little bit more generic. So even someone is traveling with their family, someone which is traveling as a backpacker, someone which is traveling just with their partner, um, you know, just all those kind of things. And because we do have all those guides, right? We have the honeymoon guides. We have the family guides. We have all those things. May as well do something which is a bit more of a generic name so everybody is recognized themselves. Because sometimes you will have people who travel a little bit more luxurious, we will have the content that they need. Genuinely, we have all those research. We have done all that work, but they will not click on something that says backpacker. You know, if you're looking for planning your honeymoon, you wouldn't click there. But we genuinely have like a 30-day itinerary all planned for you with so much information. It's literally the best thing you can read if you ever plan a honeymoon to New Zealand. And we have that for you. So that would be a shame that just because of the name, you wouldn't click on it. So that's why we decided to rebrand that. And so, yeah. And also, it matched a little bit more what we're doing in the South Pacific as well with Fiji Pocket Guide and Nui Pocket Guide and Tonga Pocket Guide. So that was the story behind that. Um, Fabio is somehow saying that haircuts in New Zealand are quite cheap compared to Europe. How much do you pay in Europe for your haircut? How much more can it be? It's crazy. But yeah, please tell me. Uh, Michael says, I think it's called Cape Egmont. Like, yes, that is true, Cape Egmont. Yes, that is correct. Uh, not sure if you already said that. Yeah, sorry, we're a little bit of a delay right here. Violet says, hey guys, I'm late today due to network problem. Where is Laura today? Hi, I am going to be Laura today. Uh, I hope it's okay. So yeah, here you go. Uh, so Laura was here for the first part of this live session, but it kept on bugging and bugging and bugging and bugging. And she did have some commitments. Uh, so that's why she had to go. And now she's doing some work and everything like that. So yeah, she's updating. Literally, currently right now, she's updating NZ Pocket Guide. She does have a um, like certain amount of like things she wanted to do today. And so that's why she had to go uh, to make sure that the website is up to date for you guys. Um, but so she was on, but she's not on anymore. So yeah, I'm taking a sip and then I'm gonna read what Malik is saying. Oh, okay. I'm not going to read what Malik is saying. I I don't know why Malik. Uh, this is an English kind of a stream. If you're more than more than welcome to put your comments in English, um, tra translate that for us. I, I I'm willing to bet. That is, uh, when are the borders opening? Um, that's what I'm betting your question is. But since I'm not sure, if, if you don't mind uh, uh, translating your question to English, that'd be, that'd be lovely. Chandler says, I've been listening to a podcast created by a couple living in New Plymouth. Uh, thanks for the information. Uh, oh, cool. Um, yeah, share that podcast with us. So I'm more than happy to give something to people to listen to. I mean, nowadays, we definitely do want to have more entertainment since we're all stuck at home. Uh, it's a Shiba Inu. Oh, that's what the dog is. Thanks, Fabio. That's nice. That's really cool. I did really enjoy the little dog. We actually saw the world's cutest puppy yesterday. Actually, speaking of uh, what we've been doing during the weekend, right? We've done a lot of planting and everything. And so we get our seedlings or plants to plant, like all our veggie from the garden, everything from an old lady from a, a little town nearby. That you know, That's what she does. And, you know, she makes a few coins out of it and, you know, supplementing her pension and all that thing so yeah so we get it from her right and uh, she used to have the cutest dog and sadly the dog passed away and uh, yeah we showed up uh, and she had the cutest of all puppies and that was the heart melting and literally i played with the puppy so much that i actually forgot what i came in to buy and so when laura you know laura also was playing with the dog and everything and we're like okay we need we need to go now and laura and i looked at each other and we had no idea which ceilings to buy so we ended up living with all the a bunch of ceiling that we thought we may need and that's it and uh, yeah now we have if you guys want to know we have way too much capsicums and we have way too much um lettuce uh, iceberg lettuces but you know it's gonna make for good salads for some all right we should be back it looks like uh, it looks like we are back for some reason and Avast is telling me that um, I need to update my antivirus. Uh, yep, I definitely will, Avast. Thank you very much for that. I'm just testing to see if the live chat is back. Yeah, the live chat should be back. All right. 
So Violet Zulu was asking about is there any salon, salons for black people in New Zealand, especially in Auckland? So I am understanding that as haircut salons. Um, hopefully I'm understanding that question correctly. Otherwise, if you mean saloons like Western style bars and taverns, um, please tell me. And I'll answer both of them. Uh, because Western style uh, bars and taverns, there's something called Cobb and something, which is like a chain, which is kind of taverns, their logo is uh, is the, you know, the doors of the saloons. So here you go, that's your answer. When it comes down to a hairdresser, for, especially for black people, I have not seen some myself. Um, the black people population in New Zealand is very, very limited. I would say in selected suburbs in Auckland, there may be because, uh, you know, like uh, there's stronger communities there. So I'd say they they. Uh, my gut feeling is that there will be one or two, uh, especially in Auckland, yes. That would be my gut feeling. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, from the top of my head right now, I don't really know because I don't... Listen, I, first, obviously, I, I have white people hair, which looks absolutely terrible. I wish I had something nicer. And second, I don't really pay attention to hairdressers. It's really kind of like something that I think, like, way last. All right. Guys, what is live session is going? Since I've been struggling so much with that, you know what? We're going to attempt that one together. We are going to try to make this one work together. I am going to try to add to this screen your comment. Uh, there must be a how-to somewhere on how to do that. And I will work it out. I had it saved somewhere. I think I may have I lost this part but yeah so while you guys are asking me some questions I'm happy to answer them I'm going to take this time to be productive and try to integrate integrate YouTube chat to OBS stream and yeah display the chat on YouTube here you go there was that guy right here so I'm literally going to be doing that while you guys are coming up with a question for me I'm going to keep the live chat on the side so as soon as you ask me a question I will answer it but I've been wanting to do that for quite a while. I want you guys to have a shot at being able to um, being able to uh, see your own comments. So you see what we see, and you see if sometimes we miss it out, right? But it's not because we hate you. It's because sometimes it just doesn't display, right? So let's have a look at what this guy says. And that's kind of... Okay, in fact... Laura, can you bring me some headphones? No, you can't. Okay. Of a bust. So what you're going to want to do is go over to YouTube and you're going to want to open up one of your streams and you can see your chat here, but that's, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. If you want to look at your chat. What I want to do is click on the, do control C to copy. And then we're going to go back to OBS. Yeah. Okay. What do I do here? And what we're going to want to do is set up a custom doc, which I already have set up, but what you're going to want to do is go up to view. View. Okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. Maybe you guys can be able to see it. View. And then docs and custom browser doc, I'm guessing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yep. Okay, okay, I have it here. Michael Stewart says, uh, hey mate, your connection is very... Hey Michael, you said you had a 12 years old, I can't read that. Are you just trying to trick me right here? Uh, but yeah, it's not great. And okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, I may, I may be able to put you guys on my screen. That'd be fun, that'd be fun. I think you guys would like that. Um, okay, Anthony says it's back and I'm going to stay. So yeah, nice. B plus N says, have you heard of Starlink Satellite? It's Elon Musk Satellite. Uh, and the most remote family in New Zealand has it. Yeah, actually, I did look into that, uh, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of expensive, and also it's not that reliable because it's basically a string of satellites, which actually we can see. One time, I actually showed it to Laura. You know, like this string of light in the sky. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but uh, and I showed it to Laura. And <laughs> I was telling her it was aliens, and uh, she was like really doubting it. She's like, and then she was, she just realized that was. Um, 
uh, I was getting getting there. But yeah. Um, Oh, Michael. Okay, yes. Yeah, okay, if you if you're fifteen, sorry. I just thought that. Sorry, I misunderstood things. What was happening right here? You, Michael Stewart, yourself. You said, are you fine with the twelve years old on here? Just checking. So you're fifteen. Okay, I'm. Whatever age you have, it's okay. I'm not going to say bad words. Um. Uh, Fizan says, sir, I want to follow your Facebook page. Please tell me your Facebook page. Um, there should be a link in the description uh, and a link on our channel, but it's NZ Pocket Guide. So yeah, at NZ Pocket Guide, you'll be able to find us there. And um, B plus N says, speaking of satellite, I want to visit Rocket Lab near Gisborne. Yeah, that's fun. So it's on the Mahia Peninsula. Um, it's, it's, it's really cool. So we actually went to the Mahia Peninsula over there, and but we didn't get to go all the way to like the rocket lab and everything like that. But yeah, that's definitely on my list of things to do. I want to see a launch over there. We are all 12, 15 years old, 12 to you or something. I'm so confused now with those age. I am very confused. I I welcome everyone and it is all good. Okay. All right, I'm going to close this now. So yeah, I'm just going to keep on. So yeah, while you guys are keep commenting and asking me questions, I'm going to keep on working on uh, putting that live chat on, um, you know, on screen so you guys can see your chat. Docs, custom yeah, so browser docs. That, yeah. And as you can see, I already have one set up. So you're just going to give it a name and then you're going to control V and that's going to then populate that right here just like you see mine since I already had it set up it did okay so I'm going to reduce that guys I'm working on putting you guys on my screen which is interesting because that makes this actually work better so so far OBS is pretty good because on the other side I don't even have your chat um cool so Michael is 15 nice awesome when are you turning 60 oh do, uh, where are you from, Michael? Because uh, where I'm from, so I was born in the country of France, right? When you turn 16, this is when you get to start driving. And this is when life becomes really fun. So when are you turning 16? And will that allow you to drive? That'd be fun. Uh, Bible Sense says, let you know you experience visiting Rocket Lab once you go. Um, you're the guinea pigs. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, we'll be your guinea pigs if you want. But uh, yeah, I definitely will let you know. Um, yeah. Oh. I make oh I make I, I may have the live chat right here oh that makes that that is gonna make my life so much easier right now guys Woo. but yeah uh, I'll definitely be uh, be able to um, to um, to tell you how it is we'll probably do a video about it for sure okay now what I want to do is to add a source I'm guessing I'm trying. Uh, No, I'm working on trying to put the live chat while you guys are asking me questions. Okay, uh, no, okay, I'm keep going, I'm keep going. I will put the live chat on, on the, uh, by the end of this live session, guys, your live chat will be on my screen so you can see your text. Didn't go and populate it, but it was already there. Now what we need to do is take this and bring it over here into our chat area. So we're gonna find our source that we have for our chat and I have mine labeled as YouTube chat browser source. So I'm going to right click, go to properties, and since it's blank, we're going to go and do control V, hit OK. Browser source, OK, YouTube chat. Yeah, feel free to keep on asking me questions, guys. I'm just working on uh, making this whole thing work. OK, URL, beam. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I just need to work on a bit big. Let 
bit big. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on uh, on changing that size. So just so you know, uh, you guys are on there. I'm gonna transition so you guys can see it. So look at that. I have that. Michael Stewart says, I'm from New Zealand and I turned 16 in April 22nd, but I have anxiety about driving. So yeah, no. <laughs> Why are you stressed about driving? Uh, I feel like if you are well taught, you know, it, it, it's pretty good. Cool. Like they, you know, it gives you quite a good amount of freedom um, and you don't have to rely on your friends. So it's, it's not bad. It allows you to explore New Zealand, which is quite, quite good. I mean, in my opinion. Um, okay. All right, we are going to try to change the width of it uh, to something uh, smaller. So we're going to make it 400. There you go. So the goal would be to be able to have that maybe in between Laura and I. Should I have it here? Just split Laura and I? How, how should I do this one? Actually, I may... You know, like for the next live session, should I should I split it like that? What do, what do you guys think about that? And I put the live chat right in the middle, so you know we all see what's up. Maybe. Maybe that'd be good. Uh, okay, Fabio says, as Jacinda and Dr. Bloomfield or somebody else said something about the next step for New Zealand in regard of COVID. Um, yes, uh, so you may have missed the news, Fabio. So uh, here's a quick catch up for you. Uh, we did that in a previous live session, the one that you missed and, uh, and that didn't work. So quick catch up, uh, very quick, right? Because I've done it already three times so far. But there is a uh, new mini, uh, managed isolation quarantine steps, uh, which are going to be entering in action. So uh, step one, starting uh, from the 8th of November, there is a reopening of the border for low risk traveler from low risk countries i.e. Samoa, so most countries from the South Pacific, so Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, Tokelau. Um, so those small countries over there, quarantine free travel uh, to New Zealand. That, is in. that doesn't mean we can get there, that means they can get in. Um, the existing quarantine free travel arrangement that we have with Cook Island and Nui won't change and that will stay the same. So that's just kind of a first step with that. Um, step two, starting from November the 14th. Um, and again, it's from so it's going to be somewhere in there they're going to start reducing the amount of time that you spend in quarantine rather than spending 14 days they're going to make you spend only seven days that will also reduce the fees in half so rather than being three thousand one hundred dollars for um for for one person that would be only 1550 for instance now their arrivals will be tested on day zero day three day six and they will also undertake rapid antigen test before leaving MIQ. And then you'll have to isolate at home for about three days. And so therefore you're gonna get a PCR test on day nine and wait at home until you get the result and then you'll be allowed in the community. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I need to... Interesting, sorry. Uh, and then the step three is um, that from the first quarter of 2022, which is January, February, and March 2022. It is uh, there is going to be a bit more of a, um, a an attempt at um, moving away from uh, managed isolation uh, as isolation quarantine and toward home quarantining. So they're going to attempt to get people to quarantine at home, and that's only going to kick in when New Zealand move to this, uh, you know, green light, red light, orange light system that we've been talking about uh, quite a few times in the live session. So when basically New Zealand reach 90% vaccination, then at that point, uh, we're going to be moving to that system. Wow, I was able to actually chit chat quite a lot with that. Okay, I need to check my phone right here, sorry. Google is making me jump through a million hoops as per my usual. But uh, yes, it's me. Come on, make it work. Boom, that might. Okay, so that's basically uh, what they're going to be doing. So that's a step toward trying to get things um, things working right here. Speaking of things working, I will want to be this one here and not be asked again. In the middle of a pandemic, what is the government going on? decided they. What is going on right here? Okay, that was chaos. Okay. 
Okay. Definitely know what I want you to do. Okay. Uh, I think I've done uh, some really wrong things, but that's okay. We're going to attempt it again. That's why that's why we learn people. That's why we're here together, we learn. Whew. Okay. You're welcome, Fabio. So I don't know how can I get that thing back. What do you guys think about having the live chat on? Do you think it's a good idea or no? Do you think you sh I shouldn't do that? And also, I would like to see you the dog. Thank you. Hitting uh hitting someone yeah okay oh yeah youtube chat here you go i want to have that that dog somewhere no okay i think i'm gonna have to do this one again okay i'm gonna i'm gonna just uh Ooh, oh 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 i can try this thing dog and there's one called live chat there you go there you go it's back to me here you go. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Michael is said that about driving. He says he's scared about hitting someone. Then people calling me a horrible person. I've suffered bullying uh, by a very disturbing uh, whoop, um, ever since I was nine. Okay. Well, listen. Driving driving doesn't make you a person that's going to hit someone with your car, right? It's ju you just have to drive safe. Uh, respect the speed limit, never been bullied or forced into driving faster than you feel comfortable with. Um, in New Zealand, I've found like people really do like to tailgate, to come really, really, really close to you when you drive because you're not at the exact speed limit or even above it. I never change the way I'm doing things. If I don't feel comfortable driving any faster, you can come as close as you want from me at the back. It is absolutely fine. When it comes to bullying, everybody has been bullied at some point in their life. I've been bullied quite a lot as well. Um, I feel like it should never be a driving force behind your decision in your entire life. If you're only 15, and I know that, you know, it, it is not necessarily the best time for you to hear like lessons from people which are adult like I am. I know I used to find that very annoying, but if you want to take one thing away from, you know, this conversation that we're having right here, it's like never let be bullying being one of the driver behind whatever decision you're making. You make a decision for yourself because you feel like you will benefit from it. That is it. If you make a decision because you think you're scared of bullying or this, ignore those people. It's so easy to ignore people and it drives them absolutely nuts. So, yeah, listen, I, you know. A lot of life is online, right? You know how much I'm getting bullied and how many messages I'm getting, how many comments I'm getting for having a French accent and daring to talk about how to travel in New Zealand. It's a daily basis that I get messages of people telling me to go home, that I know nothing about New Zealand, that, you know, all these kind of things, right? If you look at the amount of subscribers we have on our channel, we have a pitiful amount of subscribers for the amount of content that we're doing, for the amount of knowledge that we're having and everything compared to people which speak with a more Kiwi accent and everything like that, but know much less about New Zealand because they just fit better. It does not stop us in doing what we love and giving the information that we think people need to have when planning their trip to New Zealand. People which are smart enough to dig a little deeper and find the information that we provide for them are usually quite thankful about it. It's not going to stop us from doing what we want just because I sound a little funny, because I talk a little fast, because I'm a little passionate about this and that. I've heard that all my life. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. So yeah, don't take bullying uh, into consideration any of your decision making for the rest of your life. I hope that sinks in. Maybe it will. Maybe maybe it's good for you. Um, hey, Telmo from Brazil is here. How are you doing, Telmo? 
Uh, Fabio says, I will put the chat a little bit more to the bottom so we can see the say something, so we can't see the say something box. Okay, yep, that's a good feedback. I will put it lower, so kind of like something like that. Kind of like something like that. Let me transition. Cool, do we like that better? I'm moving a little bit, yeah. Uh, what, what about what about this? I would like to I would like to be able to change a little bit like kind of the look of it. Like I uh, I think I think white may be better. Um, I think I don't know perhaps. Let's have a look if I can change that uh, that thing. Right, this this might end up being a disaster. This might end up being a disaster. I may I may attempt to change the color of it. Oh, should I? Should I try to do it now? You know what? We're here to try things right now. Look, we've been hanging out for over an hour together now, guys. I may as well do all those things I really wanted to change and to do. I've been wanting to do those things. Yeah, so just to give you an idea, um, uh, uh, Michael, right? I have more than 230 people banned from the channel, right? Just to give you an idea on how many people I banned. As soon as you're being rude, I'm just banning you. It's fine. If you don't bring anything positive into my life, you do not need to be in my life and I will ignore you. So yeah, I was just uh, I was just going through the settings right now. As soon as someone insults me or insults Laura or you know thirst on Laura, um, I, I straight away kind of ban them. It's kind of like you you do not need to be here in my life. There is no need for you to be here. Um, okay. Let's go for that. And then I'm gonna attempt. Uh, I don't know if that works. Um Okay. Don't know if I'm really satisfied with that with that thing. I'm I'm gonna keep on trying to play a little bit with that chat. So what do we have? We have Oh my Glob. Oh, oh my Glob, look at that. That is again a fantastic name. Oh my Glob says, Kia ora guys, I hope you have a great day. By the way, I've enrolled on the border exception for international students. I hope that I'm one of the nominees. Thank you guys. Hey, that'd be really awesome. I would love for um you know, for it to be to be you coming in, that'd be really nice. And width, I think I want to reduce the width a little bit of the live chat. I don't know, I'm not happy with it being too large. But I'm gonna increase the height of it. Let's see. I really want it to. Oh my God! I've done something very wrong. No, 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 no. What is going on? What have I done? Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to do, I think I had 300 here and I had 700 here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What do we think of that, guys? Let's have a look now. Just just die in the middle, so you get like the little chat right here that's coming in. What's... Yeah. Okay, um, why do we have Michael Stewart that says, thanks for the advice. You're very welcome, Michael, honestly. Like, happy times, happy times. There is no need to... Yeah, there is no need to, to, to panic about bullying, honestly. Bullying is terrible. Okay, Fabio says, Robin, you are our favorite French guy that is very capable to provide feedback and hacks on how to travel in New Zealand. Oh, that's lovely. Um, you are <laughs> capable. <laughs> I saw the mistake. It's all good, Fabio. Um, cool. Um, Michael says, what if they are just defending themselves? Uh, they, you think they are bullying even though they are not. Well, that's the thing. If there is a misunderstanding, you can always clear that with words, right? But if you feel like it's not contrary, no matter what, even if a person is saying something which to them is not rude or anything, like that, if they're not contributing anything to your life, you don't need them. There's so many people around. You don't need those guys. If it makes you feel bad, no matter what, you have no duty to them to, to do anything, right? So don't, don't, don't panic. I, I say, I know, I know it's maybe a bit rude, but I say just remove hindrance from your life. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, I, I, sorry. I, I, I know it sounds a little bit rude, right? But I feel like if a person doesn't contribute anything positive to your life, because there's so many people around, just make other friends, you know? It has happened to us so much, even here in New Zealand, right? When you have some people, I'm like, I kind of feel like I'm seeing them because it's kind of like something we do. And I don't necessarily agree with none of their life choices, none of who they are and everything. So I just removed them from my life. And it was just kind of like, I don't want to see those people again. And it forced me to make other friends. And then I actively seeked other friends and it was perfect. So yeah. Jeff says, uh, I would love to move to New Zealand. How difficult is it to get a work visa or become a citizen? So um, uh, there is a law in New Zealand that says that if you're not a registered immigration advisor, you do not have the right to give immigration advice. And, and sadly, I am not an immigration advisor and I, I would like not to um, face a fine, um, you know, uh, due to all that. So for this reason, I wouldn't be able to give you any kind of too specific advice. But um, how difficult is it to get a work visa or become a citizen in New Zealand? Well, New Zealand immigration has done a lot of changes due to COVID. And post-COVID, I think it's going to be significantly more difficult than it has been before. So uh, you need to have very specific skills. You need to have good diplomas. You need to actually bring something really good to the country for them to consider. You need to be within... Um, an in industry that New Zealand uh, uh, has uh, already um, ascertained to be uh, a, a, an industry of interest for them. You need to be having, a, 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 basically be filling a skill shortage within the New Zealand job market. And at that point, it would be relatively easy for you to do that. We have had some friends, and it's a very extreme case, right? She's one out of four experts in her field in the entire world, right? But she was able to come to New Zealand with her whole family really easily, uh, even during COVID. She literally just arrived like a few months ago. But um, but unless you have those kind of skills, then it's, it's going to be harder post-COVID for sure to come to New Zealand. Um, why is Fabio... What, what, sorry, Fabio says... Oh no, Cody says I'm back. This is why I was like, why is Fabio saying he's back? It's, it's... Cody says he's back. That's cool. Then we have NZ Pocket Guy is not legally. Oh yeah, cool. So he's doing the speech for me, Fabio. Look at that. You've been here so often. I love it. So yeah, what do you guys think about that chat? I want to hear from you guys. Do you like the idea of having this chat? Even for all of live sessions, do you like the idea of having the chat chat box right here or not? Um, also, should I make it a little bit bigger? Ooh. No, 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 no. I've done a mistake. No, no, no. Oh, why do I keep doing those mistakes, guys? You're really seeing me like kind of dabbling with the... Okay, that's a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, is it in the middle? I can't really tell. I think it is. Okay. Um, Michael Stewart keep on saying girl. I don't know why it's girl. Uh, but yeah. Cool, okay, so this this looks good. What I'd like is for it to be white and not being black, right? I feel like it would match more the brand and you know, like what's on top right here, you know, I'd like it to be all be like white, you know, that'd be, that'd be kind of nice. I just want to make it white. I just don't know how to. Um, Anthony says, I don't know I like it without, he says you like it without it because you can't read it and it just interferes with the picture. Uh, we got the chat room down below anyway. Okay, yeah, okay, that's that's honest feedback. So right now we have Michael for and Anthony without. You know, I, what I like to do with you guys is that I'd like to... I like to test things with you all. So maybe for the next live session, I put it in the middle and I put that as a poll and I get you guys to vote if you want that or not. Uh, on here, so yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of an interesting for me to know. Um, yeah, I don't know how to make it white. Very frustrating. Background color. Can I change the background color to that? Would that change anything? If I were to do that, I'm doing some random coding right here, guys. I have no idea what those things are. If someone is smarter than me, that'd be lovely. Oh, wow, I wonderfully changed nothing. Well, that was great. Hope you like that, guys. Um, but yeah. At some point, I'm going to have to... Uh... Okay, 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 okay. That may be interesting. Okay. Hey, you know what? We achieved something at least today. 
But you know that you make it white. How can I change the color of that? I feel like I feel like it's I feel like I know where it is, but really don't want to do it. Because if I do it, it is Okay, here's what I'm gonna attempt. I'm gonna try that. I'm attempting something, people. If I do that. I think it may be light for next, but not on this. Okay, okay, okay. I think I can start getting it now. I start getting it. Yeah, cool. Michael Stewart says, what is your favorite food? Um, I like homemade food. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of eating out, right? So I'm going to talk about uh, homemade food first. I make my own pastas, right, from scratch, like Lydia, with flour, eggs, and water, right? I make my own pasta from scratch, and I damn love that. Um, I'm really big fan of pasta. I do like, you know, making like blue cheese sauce and everything with it. I do really, really like that. When I eat out, um, I am always looking for a place that will have dessert and especially cheesecake. So yeah, I think that I would say cheesecake. I could live on cheesecake. If that was my desert island um, kind of stuff, I'll say cheesecake. So yeah, what would be your desert island food? Like, you know, you know that game, right? If you are going to a desert island, what's the only thing that you will take with you, blah, 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 you know? What's your only game? What's your only film? What's your only that? So what would be your only food that you would bring um, into a desert island? Ah, okay. If I can't change that chat as... The other idea that I could have would be to change the banner on top. You know my banner right here? From white, I could change it to black in order to blend. So let's, let's have, a, have a look. This one here. And what about that? Michael Stewart says, Cheesecake and peaches for me. So a peach flavored cheesecake, that's pretty good. What about that? We know we're having black over there on top. We, we can have a, that looks like backpacker got after dark though. That's a bit, uh, should be cheeky, isn't it? But yeah, what if, uh, what if I made everything look like that? You know, I could change the logo to have a white logo and all the ch ch change the text in black. Hmm. What what about that? Also, I don't want top chat or all the chat. Yeah, here you go. Michael Stewart. Oh, okay. So the thing is, like, it will show what I need to show or hide right here. I don't know if you see Michael, but um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's this is not good. So I need to put. Yeah, okay, so I need to leave it as top chat. Uh, also, I don't want to show that just because of, um, yeah, I have to remove it because of the things. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I, I tend to agree with you. I think it, it may look worse. I, I tend to agree with you, Anthony. Yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll get back to white on top. That, that's nicer. I just, I wish I could have the live chat itself in white. I think it will look much nicer. I just, I need to figure out how to make that work. It's okay, but at least, hey, Michael, it's, you don't have to be sorry, but at least you see what we see on our end, you know, like the fact that we get a warning by, uh, by, by YouTube if you say something and it tells us like, hey, what do you want to do with that? Uh, you know, there'd be naughty boys right here. Okay, one thing I could be doing though is that I could be doing something. 
here's what I will do, I think. I will also change that feed. You absolutely do not have to apologize, mate. I am absolutely not upset. I have, I'm a carefree kind of person now, my friend. So it does not bother me to the slightest. But I want the YouTube chat to go behind Sorry, guys, I'm working on it, working on it. Boom. So, yeah, we're having that. Okay, and then I'm going to go for the YouTube chat. I'm going to make it. There's no reason to put over Joe's. <laughs> Go ahead, ban me for doing that. <laughs> Hell no, mate. We don't ban people for doing silly things. Are you joking? I ban people for insulting us. I'm not banning people for doing silly things. Hey, we all learning right here. I'm learning how this uh, nonsense is working. Okay, I want it a little bit bigger. What do we have? Fabio says... Uh, have you ever considered to move away from New Zealand? Friends of mine stayed in New Zealand for about eight or so yet and moved back to Europe after that time. Just curious. Um, so we've been considering moving to places such as more, more the South Pacific. That's more where we are considering moving. But um, now we haven't pulled the trigger on that. It hasn't been, it hasn't been like um, something that we really wanted to actually act on. So far, we're pretty happy with New Zealand. So we remain there. Uh, so yeah, I'm just trying to adjust the... Um, the bottom over there of the live chat. So yeah, working on, on that for all of you, Hope, hopefully. Here you go. I think that's quite neat and nice transition. Here we go. What do we think of that? Okay. What do we have? RNG retracted their message. So I do not know what they have said. Maybe something very nice. Maybe not. Nobody knows. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Then what else do we have? We have um, Michael Stewart said, go somewhere else. No, you don't have to go somewhere else. I just, you got to see what, you know, when you do comments and everything on, on, on YouTube and everything like that, now you know what we get to see. You know, like, hey, I'm interested in putting this comment or not because that's something that we judged weird. That's it. Uh, RNG says, what is the best way to book an affordable flight to New Zealand? Oh, that's a very interesting question. So there is, there is a couple of tips and tricks that you could get to actually uh, book a cheap flight to New Zealand. So the first thing that I will uh, say, this is not sponsored. I just want to point that out. This is not sponsored whatsoever. Um, actually, sorry, let's just, uh, let's just put uh, Whitbix, the Kiwi Bird, a little, uh, little closer to you guys so you get to see it better. Uh, yeah, so one of the things you guys can be doing in order to che to book a cheap flight to New Zealand. Sorry, I kind of feel like Whitbix needs to have a little bit more of a, of a prominent place right here. Look, now he's here. Otherwise, I feel all alone in my, in my chit chat, you know. No, don't look away from me. Look here. Uh, so one of the things you can be doing is to uh, use a VPN. So it's not sponsored, so you can use whatever VPN of your choice. You do not have to use one over the other. And uh, you can uh, you can use that to place yourself in different geographic locations and also remove all your history search because price of flight changes depending on your history of search. Then booking flight on Wednesdays is actually um, is actually the best days um, uh, to book uh, a flight. I'm just uh, finding the article that we have because we have multiple uh, tips for you um, on that. Here you go, I have it. So yeah, so booking on Wednesday is usually better for some reason. Then I think the amount of time before your flight is uh, 47 days before your flight is usually the optimum time in order to uh, to get the cheapest deal for your flight. Obviously with COVID right now, a lot of things have changed, but for later. Uh, yeah, so flying midweek, flying on Wednesdays and everything is usually the best. Um, uh, yeah, so if you come in New Zealand just for like a short holiday or obviously book your return flight but if you come to New Zealand for like let's say about three months holiday then you're better off actually uh, buying a one-way ticket and then later on buy another one-way ticket it sometimes is quite cheaper 
Um, also combine airlines and that's the number one tip, right? Rather than kind of, let's say you're flying from uh, the Europe, right? And you are taking Emirates and the Emirates is going to fly you from, let's say, Frankfurt all the way to Dubai. And then in Dubai, they're going to fly you from Dubai to um, to New Zealand. Well, sometimes it's cheaper to actually combine airlines. And so let's say you fly Emirates to Dubai and then you fly uh, Cathay Pacific to, uh, to Auckland, for example, and that's cheaper. It's usually that means that you have to actively do this, you know, two separate bookings, but that usually works uh, much cheaper and that's something that we do quite often uh what other tips did we have right here so again i'm on nz pocket guide right here i'll show you mate um nz pocket guide that's our site and it's how to book a cheap flight to new zealand if you want to google that mate um you know it's pretty handy and you get all our tips right here and you can also reflection of our lights over there in the background so you guys have a little bit of a tour right here uh, so yeah, uh, the, this is this is this is a couple of tips for you. There is much more, and we actually explain all of them in details. Then you have a look. Oh yeah, usually kind of um, call the airline and ask them to price match, and usually they beat each other prices. Uh, using VPN and private browser is really easy, and obviously be flexible with your seat arrangement. You don't necessarily need to be next to that person. Usually you walk a lot around the flight anyway. I'm kind of a walker during flights. I don't stay sitting quite a lot, so yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And Michael Stewart, that's an interesting message. But you know what? I love it. That's that's weird. Okay. Um, what do we have? Anthony Comstock says, maybe if you made it wider but smaller so you could put it above you guys' head underneath that white emblem where they can read the whole line and it's bigger so they can read it. So you think you think I should put it above the white banner? I feel like if I put it above the white banner, we can see them just one by one, and um, Anthony, I don't think that's doable. I don't think there's enough space above our head, and also I think as you show one person by one person, and then. That may not be best. Uh, let me give it a shot right now. Let me just, I would like to write down those settings. Just so, uh, you know, just so I don't have to redo the whole thing, right? So I'm just going to write down those settings. 320 by 770. And then I'm going to attempt it now. Um, cool. Cool. Are we neighbors? Are we neighbors, Michael? We're not neighbors. Are we? If we're neighbors, yeah, grab a drink together. Juice or something? Okay. So, okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Okay, for the height. So, I see what you mean. I see what you mean, uh, Anthony, but... Here we go. Is that what you were meaning, Anthony? I feel that with that, it really doesn't... You know, we can only read one of them. I don't know, maybe at the bottom. Uh... How is uh, public transportation in New Zealand? Uh, okay, so uh, that's RNG asking about public transportation. Uh, so public transportation in New Zealand. Sorry, let me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm obviously this this live session is mostly to me doing a couple of tests, right, and then uh, making making it work. I think I have some cool things going on, but we'll see. 
All right, public transportation in New Zealand. Uh, okay. Flights are quite extensive. There is two companies, Jetstar and Air New Zealand, that will fly around most of the airports around New Zealand. And yeah, you'll be able to fly, for example, on the main route, such as Auckland, Queenstown, and everything, for around $50 if you get yourself a good deal. Otherwise, it will be around $200 New Zealand dollars. Um, if you're looking at bus transport in cities, some of the major towns, such as Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, have pretty good uh, public transport. Actually, in Verkagil also has pretty good public transport. And Dunedin is not bad either. So uh, yeah, those, those towns have a decent public transport. Uh, but when it comes to national public transport, when it comes down to buses, there's only one, basically one main company called Intercity that will have buses uh, that goes in between all the different cities. You're probably going to have one connection a day for most towns, you know, to go like between all most towns, which is plenty enough to be able to travel around. And uh, departing Auckland and, you know, like let's say the Auckland Road to Ryan and everything, you will have like five to six connections a day. Obviously not in COVID times, but, but right now, um, you know, because they are m much bigger routes. But yeah, that's kind of like what I have for you as a um, public transport. But feel free to ask a follow up questions on the, on the what do you want me to expand on while I keep on playing. OK, everybody else like Fabio and everything. What do you think about the live chat all the way at the bottom? I think that we just don't see enough of it, uh, in my opinion. Anthony says, I don't know. I still I still it's. I uh, can't be, I can't read it, but I read it better in the live chat than I do in that things. Yes, that's what I mean, but I still can't read it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree. It's not, it's not ideal, but I kind of want to give you guys a shot to see, like, I actually have... Um, yeah. Okay, let's attempt it again. I'm just going to put it back like it was. Oh, maybe I can put it like way bigger. Okay, okay. Let's let's just let's just let's just let's just go nuts at it. Let's go bananas. Let's make a height of like three hundred. What about that? Boom. And then it's just our head here. No, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Did you just have our head talking? You would have my head here, and then Loa's head here. No, that is, that is ridiculous. That is no. I don't like it. No, I don't think I like it. Hey, we're trying here. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I, I think I think better was. Well, what do you, what do you guys think? It's just just tell me, yeah. Uh, Fabio also replied to you RNG and says it depends on where you are in Auckland and Wellington. Yes, it's quite okay, but in the countryside, it's quite bad. Yeah, it's 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 a bit. Yeah, it's it's not perfect the countryside. Okay, so we were having three twenty here, and seven seventy. Here we go, beam, bam, boom. And we're going to buy in the middle right here, transition. Yeah, okay, so Anthony said, I don't know if it's great, blah, blah, yeah, I agree. And uh, then uh, Fabio says, I think some kind of transparent style would be better. No, I agree, you know what would be ideal, right? Let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just look at it for a second. What would be ideal right now is to replace that, <laughs> you guys saw nothing. You guys saw absolutely nothing. Nothing happened here. Nothing. You guys are all cool. Oh my lord! Holy moly, pepperoni! What happened to me? Uh, anyway, let me just um, uh, hang on to that for a minute. So I would like to replace this with an actual screen and be able to have actually to have something on the screen on here and i think that'd be nicer um oh that was that was too funny Ooh. uh all right you guys saw nothing nothing happened uh b plus n says maybe try steam yard the comments are nice and big steam yard let me just google that for you right now i'm willing to try it right now Yeah, if you know of um, if you know of uh, OBS extension that will allow me to put nice uh, nice plugin on sorry nice comments on there, I'd be very happy. Uh, the easiest way to create professional live streams, okay. Um, 
Okay, I will look at that. So it's a different system. I would like a comment. Uh, how do you say? Comment on screen. OBS. What about that plugin? Okay. If you guys know of a good plugin, just let me know. Uh, Michael, I don't know what you're talking about. Kim Kardashian, I'm not sure. B plus N, just so StreamYard is a completely different software. I'd like to stick with one software and not have like multiple things going on at the same time. So I'm going to try to find something that fits OBS. Uh, yeah, Laura may be a little bit angry, but she didn't see anything. So look, that's that's okay. Things Things happen. You saw nothing, guys. You saw absolutely nothing. It was it was smooth as. Okay, so I can close this. And yeah, so I'm still live streaming. There's ten of you guys watching me fumbling around. Uh, that, that is kind of funny. Uh, comments. I'm gonna try comments OBS plugin. Okay, I found a little video. I'm no author and I sell literally thousands of books on Amazon every single month. And well, you know the crazy thing? Very sad for you. Hi, welcome to another Rock OBS Masterclass. Okay, an OBS Masterclass, guys. So I'm going through a Masterclass. Um, yeah, Michael, I'm not going to let Laura play this uh, this one back. She won't sing. Fabio says, I think this live stream will be your longest one yet. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, like that's the thing. Usually I try to work behind the scene and then I show up and then this is why things bug this morning, right? So I'm literally going to be doing everything live and so like that, I know it works when I get started. Um, Biblosen says, what are some of your funny stories when traveling? Uh, okay, I think one of my funniest was when, and actually it's on video, when we took the... Um, ferry back from the north island to this no from the south island to the north island so we took the ferry back and then we saw some uh, flicking light in the sky and laura was panicking she thought the aliens were coming or a meteorite was coming and that was the end of of planet i know it's very it's very mean because she was crying she thought life was over but that, that was very funny um kind of an endearing story is that a guy wrote a song for us when we were in raglan and he wrote kind of like um, a theme tune for 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 videos and i thought that was kind of funny i really enjoyed that um uh, or further travel the field um people were laughing at me so much when i came out of the water after doing my first well swimming in tonga because i had really really red eyes and people were you know like they were asking me like if I was crying and everything like that and you know they were just laughing at me you know they just thought it was basically just salt water and they asked me if I was crying and like oh look at him he cried like a baby and I actually told them that I actually did cry because it was such a, an emotional experience for me to swim with those wells and they all felt really terrible for mocking me and uh, and yeah that was, <laughs> that was so awkwardly funny I really loved it uh, so yeah I think that was quite funny uh, no, the, the more funny stories Looking back at it, when the camper van broke down for like the, I don't know how many times, and then finally we had to get rid of it. That was, you know, now a couple of years later, it's fine, but it's it's funny now. But it was not funny on the moment. Um, oh, the first time that we had to empty the grey and black water from the camper van, and we had no idea to do that. We bought a massive RV, and we had no idea to do the most basic thing. That was quite hilarious. 
Um, yeah, you know, like when you travel, you get a lot of them. They all kind of blend a little bit together right now, but yeah. Uh, well, we went to the little island of Nui in the South Pacific. Loma and I, so we took the flight back. And in Nui, it's a little bit different because, you know, they do check in and everything. Like it's basically it's a whole day process to take the plane, right? So we checked in our bags and we were like, okay, we have about one hour. So we took the car and we drove back very quickly to another restaurant in order to grab one more bite of those coconut pies, which were the highlight of my trip. Such an amazing desert. And um, yeah, uh, that was just kind of really funny. Like in between checking our luggage, and boarding the plane, we snuck out of the airport, got a coconut pie, and raced back to the airport in order to make it on time to get the plane back. So that was that was kind of funny as well. Um, other funny stories. When we went to Fiji, uh, we were over there to do some research to start the Fiji Poké Guide. The first ever time we went to Fiji, and we were taking our pictures and doing some research. And then we're going from resort, resort to resort. So we're going to all the resorts, taking some pictures and checking them out to, to know like where to list them and everything. And I saw there was a big conference. It, was, it looked like there was people that was working in tourism. You know, I got that instinct now. I've been like, you know, more than a decade working in the tourism industry. I had kind of that this instinct, right? So I decided to literally walk into that conference and kind of walk around the stalls and everything like that. And uh, I was right. It was something to do with tourism. And I just kind of like... No one was too looking too much and everything like that, so I kind of walked in and I ended up meeting the head of Fiji Tourism, which is like a, a national like uh, government organization and the head of like some of the, the head of the association, like the hospitality association and everything like that. So I made all the contacts that I needed to make, like literally in that one gut feeling of walking in. So I talked to them, I told them about the project, told them what we do in New Zealand. And, you know, since then, they've been really great contact to work with and literally uh, while doing that trip in Fiji, I actually had a meeting with Tourism Fiji on there as well. So, yeah, that was kind of entertaining as well. So, yeah, just like some funny things uh, just that come to the top of my head. But, yeah, um, I don't know if any of them like really cracked you up. But, yeah, uh, B plus N, you guys seem like you're traveling quite a lot. Do you have some funny stories you want to share? Uh, RNG says, what are the rules for foreigner driving a uh, rental cars in New Zealand? Uh, well, drive on the left side of the road, which is weird. That's the wrong side of the road. That's the first one. Uh, you have to make sure that you look at your rental agreement because quite often you can't go on gravel, gravel roads. Uh, also be aware that usually your windshield is not covered by your insurance. So be aware of that with gravels and everything, you know, like kind of pings on there. That's kind of not great. Aside from that, it's just a normal uh, uh, road rules. But if you go on nzpocketguide.com and you type driving rules, we have the 12 golden rules of things to remember when driving in New Zealand. That may be really handy. Honestly, the site nzpocketguide.com is your Bible for traveling in New Zealand. I know it's kind of like it's a bit self-centered to say it, but honestly it is we worked so hard on it um fabio is laughing at things that can only happen in the south pacific yeah that definitely is what it is um yeah uh, it's it's kind of funny to be able to do those kind of things all right i'm just going to quickly watch that video to try to sort out and make the, the live comments look better on screen uh, but keep on asking questions i'd be happy to answer So something that I've been doing for a while and I'm constantly being asked how I do it is I've managed to... I don't care about your life story. It's important doing this that you create a broadcast. Um, it has to come from StreamYard. Otherwise, it won't... Well, let's pop over to StreamYard here. Now, we only want the free account for what we're looking to do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set... Um, so you have to use StreamYard, don't you? thing here is this earlier show, but they'll, they'll suffice. What's the result The box that says delete on YouTube, that will... That please uh, give me some blood. Now, they will stay no, I don't there like for it. a while. And eventually so it looks like I won't be able to do it the way I want to do it. Uh, you know what? What I'll do is I'll leave it as an option sometimes, like kind of activating it or not. You know, sometimes I'll put it on, sometimes I won't put it on. I'll just give it as an option, you know. Sometimes I'll show you guys the live chat and sometimes I won't show it. Mm, another way I could do it. Another way I could do it. Ooh, maybe you guys are going to like that. Oh, I have an idea. Ooh, 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 ooh. You guys may be very happy with that. Is if I was to do this. Then this one here, I can... Oh, no, 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 no. Webcam. 
Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working. I think I have a good idea. What about something like that? So it's not in the middle, we're right here and we can put something else in here. What about that? I think we I think we start cooking with power right here. Cooking with gas, what's the expression? Okay, what about that? I think that may not be bad, I think that may look better. Okay, okay. We have like your live chat on the side. We have Laura right here with the. Oh, I think that's better than in the middle. I think that's definitely is better. What do you guys think? Oh, that may be that may be nice. That may be very nice. I think I think that is much better. And we have Anthony comes talk. We have Michael that says his brain is vibrating. Anthony, he says, I know I said stay safe and I'm here until the end, but it's time for me to go see you next week and stay safe. Yeah, thank you for staying for that long, Anthony. I'm just trying to work out how to um, make things look. Yeah, the sound in the video was really, uh, really weird. And I also realized that maybe there is... Um, there, maybe there were some copyright issues as well on this kind of things, I guess. So want to avoid uh, that that kind of. Uh... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So the YouTube chat can be behind everything. This one here. Mark Log would say it's very mild in England, 17 degrees at the moment. It's really hot in New Zealand right now. We definitely are um, heading toward uh, some of the, the epic weather condition that we were promised. Okay, it's just a little bit bigger. You know what, I'm gonna add an extra uh, white bar. You know, you know what? We we getting there. We getting there. I think I think we're having a live session that start looking. Guys, I think we're getting some good stuff going on right here. Good stuff going on. I may even. I think I may even. Yes, yes, yes. People, we are cooking with some epic gas right here. Shouldn't say that so loud, so happily, but, but. But I think here's what will happen. I'm going to put this thing here for now. I'm going to move that. I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly transition every time so you guys can see what's what I'm working on right now. We'll, uh, we'll arrange those things a little bit later. We'll do the we'll do the snickeroo snickeroo afterwards, guys. I shouldn't say snickeroo snickeroo. It's a bit of a weird sentence, but okay. We have that. That is gonna do, go down a little bit. Here you go. This is gonna go up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, transition. This is what we have right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Anthony. Anthony wasn't happy with the side of the text. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, what do we have? Sorry, uh, uh, Fabio says in Austria we have about five degrees Celsius. Ooh, that's that's pretty that's pretty cold. 
RNG says your blog is great. Oh, is NZ weather in December and January? So we do have uh, we do have full article on NZ Pocket Guide as well about the weather in January and February. But uh, just to let you know, it is full summer right here. So expect really uh, big, uh, you know, yeah, expect summer summer type weather. But uh, so hot. Make sure you have sunscreen on. The UV, you know, there's no protection between you and the and the sun over there. So the UV is quite high. So yeah, keep that in mind. I would like to add a new source. I want to add a color source. I want a color source, color source, white four. That's going to be his name. Yes, guys, I am going bananas. I want to select a color. I want this one here. Boom. Okay. All right. I'm all white right now. That's not what we want, is it? Working on you guys, I'm building stuff, I'm building stuff for you all. Okay, what do we have? Uh, Anthony says, yes, the size of the text are so small, you can't read it when you're looking at the screen. Yeah, it is It is really small right now, but I'm working on trying to make it better right now, so hopefully that will work fine. Okay, what do we think of that, guys? Now, we do have some... We do have some... Uh, some space right here. What could I put on that space? What do you mean, uh, Fabio? What do you mean you can't read anything? It's, it's, not, it's the same as on top, but it's just a different color, a different uh, position. Is it, is it still not readable? What, uh, what are we, what are we, what, what, which one is it that we can't read? What is... Uh, Okay, you can read everything. Okay, good. Good. Do we like it at the bottom or I think I think I think like that is kind of nice. I just don't know what to put. What do I put in a big white area that we have right here, guys? What do we put? What can I put in there? I mean, I could make a video to kind of place in there. Could put, could put our faces. Uh. <laughs> Michael Stewart says, "I'm gonna go uh, kick my brother in the sensitive area." Bye. Have fun. The text. Uh, Fabio said the text was covering the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that. Yeah. So hopefully that has been fixed now. Um. Now, my main issue is going to be to get that here. Okay. All right. Now, this white color source right here, I need to change its size. Eh? It's nonsense right now. Height, height, we need to put it like at 500. Okay. All right. Now, guys, what do I put? What would be useful information to put in there? Uh, you know what? What I could do, what I could do in there is I could have, you know, when you guys ask me some questions and everything like that, I could have my other text right here. You know, I have that. I have this thing prepared for like other text. That could be there where I have this, this, this banana thing. This is why I used to go for like, hey, you asking for this? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll show all those uh, all those emojis. Mark Lockwood says, we turn the clock back one hour tonight in the UK, dark at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, I think at some points we need to change time as well here, which is annoying. I don't like this um, this time-changing thing. What I also don't understand is, uh, why is there a bit of a delay? Okay. I'll be back. I just need to get a, a, a hard drive with some assets on there. Oh no, I won't be able to place it, would I? I just need to quickly. Uh, oh no, no, I will be. Guys, I'll be back in the thing. I just need to get myself one hard drive with some assets, and I'll be back in one minute. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to this, so like that you know that I will be back in literally, literally one minute. <laughs> Right, guys I'm back I'm back I hope you like this uh, this little video right here okay uh, is anyone still here or did everybody uh, leave I don't know there's still 11 of you guys uh, being here by the way if you had a minute to um, to hit like that's always cool okay Fabio says you could adjust the volume of the intro it's quite loud in comparison to the volume of the rest of the live stream absolutely no problem very good feedback um, the volume of the intro will be Yep, okay, speed. No, I can't. I cannot. Uh, okay, discount, okay. Oh yeah, I think I could do that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna go back to the live intro just to see if it's better. Okay, what do you think of that? Was it better uh, for you, uh, Fabio? Did we like that better or not? 
I like to, I like to, uh, yeah, I like to try things when you guys give me good feedback like that. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Um, Michael said they're beautiful wildlife. Yeah, they are. They are. They're beautiful. Yeah, nice. Better. Okay, sweet. Thank you very much, Fabio. Okay, so I have my mini little hard drive right here. So this is the SSD hard drive. So this little thing right here holds all our video we've ever done. How epic is that? All the videos we've ever done is here. So that's the video that we obviously published, right? Um, you know, the hard drives, if you want some behind the scene, actually, if you want to be, if you want to be interested under me right here, there is some secret stuff. And we have like gigantic hard drives like that. So this is 10 terabytes, just to give you some ideas. And this is, uh, this is half the videos we did during New Zealand's Biggest Gap here. So we have two of those, the 10 terabytes. Here you go. Little, little behind the scene for you guys. Oh, and uh, there is a grain of muesli right here because Laura always eats like a pig. There you go. Uh, okay, so in here, there is also a couple of pictures that I may want to use. So I'm just going to move the laptop a little bit to try to sneak that in in between all the cables that I've ever had. In here, come on. Come on in, guys. Ah. Why is it not working? So many cables, so many constraints. Here you go. It's in. So I'm going to try to build something like where there is all the text right here, right? Uh, I don't know. Here. Like, yeah. Where there is all the text right here. I'm going to try to build something kind of nice with Laura's face, with my face. Uh, I missed your very bad dad joke. Is it on screen or did I miss it? Yeah, beautiful one. Nice. No, it's better. You say now it's better. What is it? Oh, winter time is coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see. I seen your your very bad dad joke. Yeah, no, that was terrible, mate. You know that Laura has seen um, uh, Game of Thrones, and she's a big fan. But I have watched two episodes of Game of Thrones, the first two ones, and I was bored out of my mind. And so I've not watched any Game of Thrones episodes. So I'm a bit of a of a geek, right? I do have some uh, so some some taste of geekiness, but uh, that is not something that I I have. Um, okay, so I will need to adjust the camera a little bit lower as well, because uh, yeah, I need to adjust the camera a little bit lower. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing. Now that we don't have the band on top, right? I need to, yeah. Okay, that's a little nicer. All right, how's Kiwi? Uh, sorry, Witbix work? Yeah, Witbix is fine. Uh, do you have any questions for Witbix, by the way, guys? Uh, you know, I feel like nobody is asking any questions to Witbix, and it's going to be very sad. Okay, so here is some of the ideas that I have for the design. But that is a bit dangerous. I am attempting. Where are the thumbnail stuff? I want to put Laura's face, my face, all these kind of things. I think I want to play around with some stuff. Um, what is Fabio saying? He says, uh, you have to watch about four or five episodes to get a better feel of Game of Thrones. The start of season one is not really thrilling. Well, I've heard that the end of season eight is not really good either. So I feel like, what, do I have a certain amount of selected episodes I need to watch to be able to enjoy the show? No, mister. No, mister. I want to have uh, a show that I can enjoy at all time, every time. What is this nonsense of like, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of that. That doesn't work for me. It ain't working for me, people. Okay, so where are the shots of us? Okay, 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 okay. I may be able to add a little something to that. Um. Fabio said that's absolutely true. Yes, it is. You know, I'm not. I'm not 
watching a show where you have to select your episode. By the way, have you ever watched a show called Snowpiercer? If you haven't watched a show Snow Coast called Snowpiercer, you should try it. RNG says, I cannot find any information in the US on international driving permits. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to help you with that. Uh, when I was in the US, I actually had already my international permit from Europe. Have you tried contacting your favorite government agency, the DMV, maybe? Um, grab a ticket, go queue over there and... Uh, be told off because that's a question they don't want to answer, maybe. And Fabio says that Game of Thrones, the end is elephant dung. There you go. That's, that's a way to say it like that. Okay. Okay. Ah, so we are looking for extra sources. We are looking for images. I have an image. I'm going to call it Laura. And I'm going to find it. Yes, that's right. I'm going to find it, people. And I'm going to find it in the desktop. And I'm going to find it in... Okay. I think I'm going to have to Photoshop the image a little bit. Make it look nicer. Yep. Okay. We're going to delete that. Do you want to remove Laura? <laughs> I absolutely want to remove Laura. Thank you very much. Has Laura been removed yet? That would make me very happy. Okay, people. I'm going to open that with. So that may make things a little slower. It's a big. Uh, so I'm basically going to my version of Photoshop. Drivers Club, maybe, uh, says five. You, I don't think there is a driver club in the US. Okay, so what I want to do on this is I want to do an effect right here and I want to do in outline of a white color and I want it to be twenty five pixel. And then I'm going to put a, another layer right here with this. I'm going to make that a red. Just doing a bit of Photoshop, uh, guys. I know it's a little boring right now, but don't worry. I will get back to answering questions in a minute. I just need to uh, Photoshop Laura's picture into something more appropriate. And I'm going to go a little bigger than that. I'm going to go in here, here, oh. Laura is the queen of Photoshop. She could do so much better than me. I'm doing terrible right now, but... Oh. Okay. Effect, I'm going to try to see my outline. You can make it a little bit bigger. Sixty. Okay, let's go for sixty. All right. So I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna do control and there. I'm gonna say PNG. Yes. I'm gonna say uh, export. And I'm gonna ask to go in live right here. Or a blue side. Yes. And I'm gonna say two. Save. Boom. All right. Let's see. Okay. What do we have? Fabio says, in Austria, we are getting uh, the international driving license via the OAMTC, uh, which is our biggest driver association. 
Uh, will there ever be a picture of Robin and Laura getting married? Uh, he says, wow, that's a, that's a transition of, uh, of subject right here. <laughs> you... uh, that's funny. Um, okay, so uh, is there going to be a picture of Robin and Laura getting married? We're both kind of against weddings, so I don't see that happening, mate. But, you know, dreams are free. Um, Laura doesn't, doesn't, doesn't believe in marriage or weddings and everything, and... Uh, me neither, so I don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, uh, if we get married, do we have to go to the driver association of uh, of the UK? I mean, of of uh, of Austria. All right. And then where do I want to put Laura? I want to put her here, but behind. What about that? Okay. What about we have one Laura right here? We have me on the other side. And then the text right here, I'll just make it like, you know, kind of. Oh. And sorry, I'm just uh, definitely to be much smaller. Any tips on uh, uh, okay Fabio says you say when not if yeah well yeah <laughs> all I say is not happening mate I'm pretty sure uh, okay so I have an idea right here so basically my idea is to put Laura's face on the side my face on the other side and get who we are right here. Is that a good idea or is that cheesy as? What do we think? Can I get a, can I get a whoop whoop right here if uh, you like it? And uh, NG was about to ask about uh, monetary exchange, currency exchange, but then retracted their message. But uh, yeah, tips for uh, a currency exchange when arriving in New Zealand, don't, uh, don't do it at the airport. It's way more expensive. Uh, you can head to town. Uh, there is one really nice in uh, Queen Street. Uh, there is one really nice in Queen Street, which is quite cheap. I think I think it may be quite nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to put my face on the other side, and let's see how that works, right? And uh, yeah. What do I sing? Pirate of the Caribbean. Also, am I gonna get copyrighted uh, to death because I just sang Pirate of the Caribbean? Maybe I will. That sounds like something that the, the movie studio will do. Yeah, so for a uh, um, monetary exchange, so one of the important things is to not do it at the airport because it's usually much more expensive than the rest. Uh, another good tip for, uh, for exchanging money, at the, uh, sorry, for, uh, for money exchange is to also look if you do have some options at home as well because actually sometimes at home, you will get better exchange rate. And then no matter what, you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of money when you arrive in New Zealand anyway. Otherwise, you're not gonna be happy with... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 I was doing something bad right now. I need to select the correct layer. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the one as well. Uh, also, show up in New Zealand with uh, money that you are looking to exchange. Like, for example, don't show up in New Zealand with so let's say you're from South Africa, right? I don't know what the currency in South Africa is, but you may not want to show up in New Zealand with kind of South African money. And you may want to show up in New Zealand with US dollars because you may get a better exchange rate. So you may want to have a look at that as well, uh, just for yourself. Man, doing that Photoshop with, um, 
Oh my god. Okay. So yes, yeah, so that's that's one of the tips I will give you. Um, but yeah, absolutely not at the airport. Number one tip, mate. Number one, not at the airport. That's for sure. Okay. Did I do Laura 60 or for the outline? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so there is one on Queen Street. It's on Lower Queen Street. I can't remember. It's by a gift shop. But yeah, that's the best rate in town. There is, a, there is on NZ Pocket Guide, we actually have the address of that of that place that we like. Um, we like the best. That's why we always exchange our money. Save. Okay. All right. I'm going to add this to here. What do we have as well? Um, maybe you should move Laura a little bit to the right. Okay. That is no problem at all. A right is that side here is she better here uh, you say but I, uh, so Fabio says uh, it depends on the country I think euro is quite yeah of course if you if, if you have euros euros uh, yen uh, uh, US USD uh, CAD those, those ones are absolutely fine right I'm just thinking if you form a smaller kind of country um, you may want to um, to to consider that uh, Robin I don't know if it's not too self-centered guys I almost uh, I almost think it's a little too self-centered you had multiple time of it wow wow what is that You want to delete Robin? Yes, I want to delete Robin. That that looks really uh, ugly. Uh, he says, um, "Yeah, uh, Hungarian foreign uh, would be kind of a problem, I think." Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, obviously, if you come with the country from that, yeah. Um, and also, like, really, the other thing as well is um, that you want to do money exchange because paying with credit card will add you a fee all the time, and that's going to be more expensive. So you absolutely want to do that for sure. Okay, what have I done wrong here? Let's have a look again. Okay. Let's attempt this one. I hope you're not hearing that noise every time. That must be really... Yeah, so if you exchange US dollars, mate, you're going to be absolutely sweet. Um, one thing I will say, obviously, they never exchange coins. I don't know why it would bring coins, but that's one thing that sometimes people complain about. They say, oh, no one told me uh, you you know, couldn't exchange coins. Kind of like, to me, it's an obvious one. But yeah, they never exchange coins, so keep that in mind. Come on, don't, don't ruin it like that. Yes, okay. All right, guys, I'm slowly adding my face to it. You know, one of the issues I'm having right here is that uh, with Bix right here, he's enjoying, um, he's very much enjoying having, um, having a, a seat right here. But I need to blow my nose, and he's on the top of the... Is on top of the box. Okay, transition. We're having that. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so Whitbix is here. I'm just going to steal a tissue from you, Whitbix, and then I'll uh, give you back your throne if that's okay with you. What's Fabio saying? Fabio say maybe it would be better to exchange money from a small country to dollar slash euro and then change it. Yes, yeah, so definitely that's what, that's what it is better to do, right? So you want to exchange. <laughs> Sorry about that. You want to exchange your money if you're from, let's say, Hungary, right? And you have the uh, 
you know, you're stuck with, uh, with foreign, for example, you want to exchange your foreign into US dollars and arrive in New Zealand with US dollars. Also, remember that uh, the amount of money you can bring into New Zealand is, uh, is not, uh, you know, is not unlimited, right? So you have a limit of, um, I think it's 10,000. And then after you have to, uh, you do have to uh, basically, oh, I had the immigration New Zealand here. <laughs> here you go. That's the extra text. Boom. Da, 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 da. That starts to be a lot of stuff on screen. <laughs> okay, we're gonna hide this one. Okay, we're gonna add some text now. We're gonna add some text because I wanna name the, the both of us. Um, see how that, that one will work. How should I make it look nice? Okay. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not worldwide. Uh, Ten thousand. The last Fabio. Uh, there are some countries where you can bring much more, um, especially in the South Pacific, for example. Uh, I think Vanuatu is like fifty thousand or something. It's like quite a lot, but it depends on the country. All right. I will do the text in two different sources. Here is what I'm going to be doing. Text. That's right. Yes, Manuel Lopez, it's correct. It's $10,000 without declaring it. Yes, and above $10,000, you just have to declare it. You have to explain why you're having that much money and you may have taxes to pay for it. That's just you know, just keeping that in mind when, you know, since the question was about exchanging somebody into New Zealand. Um, yeah. Look at you guys. You're all super well informed. I love it. I actually really do like the fact that you guys all are like really on the ball. It proves that, you know, hanging out with us works. People, it works. It works. My oh my, that didn't work so well, did it? Sorry, I'm uh, working on things. Okay. Uh, okay, what do we have? Uh, Manuel Lopez says, yes, exactly. You're the best. RNG says, have you worked in New Zealand? Is it difficult to find employment? Yes, yeah, so I'm still living in New Zealand. Both Laura and I both have worked, been employed, and right now are business owners in New Zealand. So yes, definitely a lot of experience with working in New Zealand. However, we more focused on to traveling on this channel, right? But yeah, is it difficult to find employment? It really depends on your qualification and how flexible you are. I've never struggled to find a job in New Zealand. Um, and I used to even help, you know, young backpackers coming to New Zealand and find jobs and everything. And that's quite easy once you do your CV properly. And we do have a full um, uh, set of guides on nzpocketguide.com, uh, you know, to help you do your CV in kind of more of a New Zealand style. So once you actually adapt your CV, like do not just translate your CV into English and think that's going to be okay. It's not going to work. Start from absolute scratch. Um, only look for a job when you're ready to be employed in New Zealand, i.e. you are in New Zealand. You have a work visa in New Zealand, you have an IRD number to pay your tax in New Zealand, and you have an open bank account in New Zealand. Unless you have all four of those things, don't look for a job in New Zealand, you're not going to find one. And then looking for a job, yeah, honestly, put yourself, uh, you know, go see people and it's more about interpersonal relationships, so go there and go see people for sure. 
Uh, okay, we have Fabio that says, I meant it like in Austria, you are allowed to bring more than 10,000 euros, um, but for every other currency is 10,000. I think it's kind of the same in New Zealand. Yeah, it's about the same in New Zealand, yeah. Uh, Manuel Lopez says, I don't know if a family travels, the maximum amount should be allowed $10,000 per family or per travelers. Do you know something about that? I think it's per adult travelers, so you can have $10,000 and your partner can have $10,000 and that's fine. But that is it. I don't think the minors can have $10,000, but don't take my word for it. Make sure to check on the, immigra on the um, customs website. So I think it's customs.govt.nz if I'm correct. Okay, let's add the text right now. And we're going to have this one here. Going to add another one. It's going to be a row name. Select the font. So we're going to go to Montserrat Medium. That's the font that we use on uh, the live stream. We're going to go 72 on a bigness. We're going to go for the color and we're going to go for classic blue that we like. Boom. And we're going to have a rubbing right here. Oh, no. And this one's going to say it needs to say something. Nice. Okay. I'm going to move myself to here. Ah, guys, I don't know if I like it. I think it may be a bit too self centered right here to have our faces on there. Don't think I'm a big fan, people. Don't think I like it. I don't think I like it. I don't think I think what I'm doing right here. I don't think I like it. What do you guys think? Honestly, am I just wasting my time right here trying to just fill up that blank? Should I just like start from scratch and do something completely new? Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going to do a Japorama of photos, maybe. Okay, what is Fabio saying? Fabio says it's... Uh, it's half past midnight. What is wrong with you? Fabio, half past midnight in Austria. I have to go to bed now because I, I have to work a little bit tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, uh, Fabio, while I was figuring out uh, a few things right here. Um, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I'm going to work on it. Let's see what the diaporama is. Image slideshow. What how does that work? Okay, here's what I'm going to be doing. I am going to resize this thing perfectly to know the size of it. And earlobes to you too, mate. Um, I'm going to resize this thing. So again, guys, if you are just brand new to this, uh, this uh, live session right here, I'm just here to try to kind of make our live session look a little better. I, I don't think that this look right, right here looks good. But in the meantime, if you want to ask some questions about traveling in New Zealand, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I'm just, I'm just for once. I'm doing all my adjustment live, so first I can get your feedback, and also, I, I, you know, I don't do the changes and then realize when we try to go live that it doesn't work. Laura, Laura, yeah, would you, would you mind giving me your opinion? Like, don't know if I'm going. Fabio says, last question uh, for Nathan. 
When will the uh, New Zealand border open? It's not for Nathan. I think it's Clay that keeps on drinking all the time. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Fabio, I'm not going to answer that. I think you know that. But Fabio, before before you go, look at Laura's new haircut. I don't know if you have seen her. Can you look at Fabio? Look at that. Look at that. It's not the best. What do you think? I miss this hair. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Like, it's just, um, obviously, so yeah, I like we, have the light the light chart. we have the light chart. I'm just trying to fill up that blank right here, right? So I'm yeah. trying to put our face Does like it really a... need our faces? Because we're already on screen. I yeah, mean, how many no. times do people need to see us? Yeah, yeah, okay, I could. I could. I think, yeah, just Laura and Robin on the bottom would be okay, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I just want to put Laura, Ro yeah, okay, yeah, I, I will try that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have fun. Oh, we need to stop for lunch at some point. I was going to say, when I finish what I'm doing, I might bring you food. If yeah, you if you want. There. That's okay. I've been live for like hours. Um, yeah, I hope uh, I hope you like it, Fabio. Um, we did unveil that brand new haircut during the beginning of the live session. So not even that video, the one beforehand. So, yeah. Okay, I think Laura was correct. I'm going to remove our faces. I don't, think, I don't think our faces are needed. No, that's not how that works. I will. Manuel Lopez says, what do you think about Invercargill? Is it a good city for living, family, and kids? How about finding a job there? Thanks. Uh, Invercargill. Hey, Nathan is here. Nathan, how are you doing, mate? Glad you're back. Uh, okay, so Manuel Lopez, Invercargill, it's a good town. I obviously haven't lived there, so uh, yeah, so I won't really be able to tell you about living with family. Also, I don't have a family, like we don't have kids and everything. It's just Laura and I, so we're obviously two young people, um, so very different, uh, different needs. Okay, uh, but, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't mind Invercargill. I think it's a cool town. A lot of people give it a bad rap for some reason, which is absolutely unwarranted. Uh, there is a fantastic... Ah, oh, I think I'm going to have to delete those things. Delete Laura. Yes. Can I delete Robin as well? Yes, delete Robin. Nathan, just give me your opinion as I work through things. You know, I'm trying to figure out something that looks nice. Uh, is it a good town to educate kids? Uh, apparently it has good school, but I obviously haven't been there, so I do not know. Uh, what is this one here? Oh yeah, no, this one's gonna move up. Yes, that's testing with the chat, Nathan. That's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, really good uh, transportation around town, as we were talking about uh, about a little bit earlier. It has really good public transport in Invercargill. Um, for when it comes to finding jobs, I, I, I don't know what kind of field you're in and, uh, and I'm not really a job expert, so I won't be able to help you too much with that. But uh, what I know is that in Southland, they do need quite a lot of workers, so it wouldn't be one of the worst places to settle in, to be quite honest. Um, uh, housing is one of the cheapest uh, when it comes down to cities in New Zealand, but still quite expensive. But yeah, it, it's quite nice there. And there's a lot of really awesome things to do outside. So if your kids are a bit more outdoor-minded, they're really going to enjoy uh, Invercargill. So that's basically all the information that we'll have for you, Manuel, for Invercargill right now. Um, yeah, Nathan, just feel free to kind of tell me what you think of all those things. Okay, so we have Lauren Robin right here. Boom. I think it should be a bit more centered right here, just under Laura. Boom. And like a little bit more center under me. Okay. Nice. You're very welcome, Manuel. I'm obviously sorry I don't have more information for you, but uh, you know, give you what we have. I will be putting. An extra little thing here. And I'm going to put Laura Creds. Hey, Michael Stewart is back. How are you doing, Michael? Oh, we have Akriti Seti that says, Hi, when is your next border opening prediction video coming? Looking forward to it. Thanks. Well, I'm going to record, I have a script right here, so I'm I'm going to record literally live, uh, because why not, we're here, guys. I'm going to record one live as soon as I'm kind of finished working on the setup right here. 
um, uh, some news about the borders opening, but um, there's really not much that has changed uh, um, at Critty. That's the issue that I'm having right here. Is like things have not changed. My predictions are not changing. My predictions are absolutely not changing. It is, it is, really, not great at the moment. And so for this reason, um, I don't have, I don't have a lot to tell you. And my prediction stay the same. It's gonna be by the mid to the end next year. It's not gonna be before. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it, it, I wish things would change, but it's still the same right now. It's still the same. Okay. I'm going to change the size right here. This is not a fun design right here. I don't know why I'm struggling so much, guys. Usually I'm not too bad at coming up with good designs and everything, but wow, 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 today, wow, wow, wow. Guys, I'm working on, I'm, I'm making things work right now. I think that may be nice. Okay, what do we have? Um, and Nathan says, could this possibly be used in the Sunday live stream? Yeah, that's literally what I'm working on, mate. I'm uh, trying to make the live stream better for, for the Sunday live stream. So that's what I'm working on right now with you. Aquiti says, I understand, no worries. Looking forward to traveling once things get back to normal. Hopefully that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Oof. I, a, you, do you remember, guys, about two hours ago when Laura brought me a glass of water and I said, I don't need it. I have a bottle of water. Well, here you go. I need it. I will never tell her that I actually needed it. Never. Okay. I think we're coming to something right now that's can be quite cool right now. Okay. Here we're going to have Laura with a creds. I may even even make it smaller. Oof. Guys, it starts it start looking okay. I think it's a little better now. We have a creds on the screen, so you got like you guys are like, wow, those guys know what they talk about. They're pretty good. I think Laura is always thinking ahead of time. She's very proactive as a lady. I think you're correct, Nathan. Laura is extremely proactive as a person. And I really like, like, like that about her. It's really cool. I kind of want to be a bit cheeky. I have an idea. It would be a lot of work for very little results, people. But I want to do it. So this will happen. Um, but yeah, Laura is very proactive as a lady. Um, and, and I really appreciate that in her. It's one of the best quality, her proactiveness. Is there a way to copy and paste that? Yeah. Hmm. 
though. Okay. So, properties, what size do we have? 24. Okay, guys, we're going to do Robin's uh, Street Creds now. We're going to add that. And then we have that. Because you said you didn't need the glass of water, but then you say, oh yeah, Nathan says, because you said you didn't need a glass of water, but then you needed it. Yeah, I think Laura kind of had an idea that it would take that long for me to do all that. Um, yeah, she's pretty smart with that. Um, okay, what do we have? Uh, RNG says, is it possible to travel around New Zealand with e-bikes? Um, that'd be fun. So traveling around New Zealand with e-bike, you will have to have your own car in order to put e-bikes e in your car. I think that'll make your life much easier. Otherwise, you can uh, book a request booking when you book your bus passes and everything like that. You can request to be able to have spot for bikes, but it's not guaranteed. So you know, that's the intercity I was talking to you about before. And they say that uh, um, sorry. Um, then, yeah, uh, you will need to, you, you the intercity stuff. They they don't guarantee you that you will have space for it. It's like if we have space for it, we'll allow you. But otherwise, uh, hell no, you are, you deal with it on your own. So um, it's not ideal the way they do things, I'll be honest with you, but. Oh, I can't really get those two things to align perfectly. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's the one. I think you'll struggle. Um, you struggle. You you probably will. You will probably enjoy more if you do have your. I wish I could do all my edits in a uh, big screen, honestly. Okay, what do we think of that? What do we think of that? What do we think? Also, is it aligned? I think it is. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so um, aside from that, if you wanted to say like you actually want to pedal your way around New Zealand, uh, uh, ING, you, yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Uh, it won't be the most enjoyable things. Like New Zealand roads are quite narrow and kind of windy and everything. There's a lot of pebbles and everything. So it's not really super like road bike friendly, to be quite honest. So you may not be able to actually tour around New Zealand in e-bikes, but traveling with your e-bike uh, may be good. Um, you may want to look into actually just buying one and then reselling it before the end of your trip in New Zealand, depending on how long you're going to spend here. Because flying e-bikes is not cheap because they're actually quite heavy. They're not just cumbersome, they're also heavy. Okay, so now that we have all that, I think I like I think I like this this thing. Uh, by the way, people, I think I do like it. So the height is gonna be what three hundred instead. Okay. Now we have all that. What I would like to do is I don't know if you see the little corner just under Laura, this black corner right here. I would like to round that up. I think I would like it to look a little bit nicer. So I'm actually gonna try to do a little swash of white. So I'm gonna Photoshop. A white thing so I'm gonna file a new and yeah that doesn't matter which size nice okay what I want is to do a big lines honestly doing Photoshop with uh, with uh, okay no doing Photoshop with the mouse pad when you have to design shapes is the absolute worst, but I'm doing it for you people because fun times. Akuna Matata, what wonderful world. That means nothing what I just said. This is not how things work, is it? Oh my God. Perfect donut. Nice.
Nice, that's a nice donut shape, people. We do like that nice donut shape. What I'd like is to have nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Where's my donut? Here you go. I uh, want it to be white. I want it to be larger. I also may want it to be thinner. that may be better like that okay cool let's see if i can do that up save as png export i'm gonna do i'm gonna call it to swash because why not i'll be back in the live chat in a second i had to be full screen right here for that what do we have uh, nathan base who says uh if you would recommend a place to visit for someone who hasn't visited that place what thing could they do Okay, well, I, I don't know which place you haven't visited, right? But I will send you to Kaikura on the South Island of New Zealand and I'll send you Swim with Seals because it's amazing to go and hang out with the sea doggos. We also have Extreme Talata that says Morena. Okay, that means good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language here in New Zealand. I'm glad to have you on board, mate. So what we're doing right here that we're just playing around a little bit with um what is that okay that's definitely not what we want to do yes uh okay so we're playing around with uh, a few of okay why is it not transparent in the background what have i done wrong right here What a 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 what I've done. Okay, attempt number two at trying to be a genius of uh, the photoshopping. Here you go. We've done that. Now you're gonna take this thing here. I'll place it there. And then I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna try to make it much bigger. I don't know, I don't even know if that's gonna work, but I'm really attempting it. Is it what I'm trying to achieve? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yes. I'm not sure if, uh, if that's gonna work, but yeah. Um, Nathan says, I was just asking just in case someone would want to do something in the north or in the south of North Island. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Um, this it's good to uh, it's good to give recommendation to people. I uh, you know that that's kind of the thing that we like to do the more the most here is kind of like to talk about like fun things to do, and things like that. So yeah, extreme talata. I'm surprised that you're here at this time of the day. Yeah, so am I. So what I'm doing right here, extreme talata, and uh, you know um, you may have have guessed that. Let's be honest, it's not. Uh, you don't need to be a brain scientist to understand what I'm doing right here. But I'm trying to kind of uh, work on the live session and try to make it look a little nicer. And because we have had so many bugs lately, my attempt right now is to literally try to make things work um, now. Oh, that's going to be kind of nice. If I was to do that. Yeah, okay. Um... So I'm trying to make things work right now, rather than actually working on things way later. You know, um, when I try to make things work for all of us, doing the live session, that's too late. So I'm trying to be proactive right here. Okay, this is good. This is what we're going to attempt. This is not bad. Okay, now, document, the whole document. I want it to be like 10 times smaller, at least 300. Boom. Okay, 
nice i am going to keep working on all that now by doing another donut <coughs> what am i not doing for you guys honestly i'm doing it all for you Okay. No. So um, yeah, so I'm just trying to make the live session looks uh, look a little bit more fun for all of you guys. I hope that you're gonna enjoy it. <clears throat> but man, I've been talking to you guys for like. three hours my throat is on fire uh, Nathan says I get asked by a lot of people what things they can do in Topo when they visit um, is it like behind the scene of NZ Pocket so what to do in Topo when they visit honestly send them to uh, to the NZ Pocket Guide website there's so many articles right here with the best things to do in Topo including our favorites and everything like that so I think I think your friends may really like it and I mean it'd be quite nice and then, um, is it the uh, behind the scene of NZ Pocket Guide? Well, for this one, yes, it is. I mean, obviously, most of our work is definitely not to do with uh, with the with with YouTube, right? Most of our work is absolutely to do with the website. Um, but this is kind of like, yeah, a little bit of a um, little bit of the behind the scene of attempting to uh, make the live session look a little better. And you know, why not? Why not all hang out together and do that? There's no risk, is there? It's just for fun. Okay, so I think I've got what I want. I've got what I want. I'm gonna. All that, honestly, like all that work, you know, you know, uh, next question that people say is the devil is in the detail. All that, right? I pretty much have everything sorted, right? All I'm attempting to do right now is to add the simplest of things. The simplestest of all them is just something to make the live chat look a little nicer. And I've been at it for like 20 minutes for no reason. Look, this is going to go here. And then behind a few things. Here you go. Just the stuff next to Laura. Here you go. All that for this. Here we go. Nice. Nathan says, thanks for the info. We let people know about the website. Yeah, so um, yeah, let me just find it for you. So if you want to save that link somewhere, I'll find it for you. It'd be nice. Um, It's coming, mate. It's coming. It takes some time. Okay. So I'm going to give you the link. Copy the link address right here. And here. Here you go. That's um, that's my favorite things to do in Topo. Right here on the link for you in the live chat. And uh, yeah, maybe that's going to help you. Okay. So I think that looks quite nice right now. 
I think we're having something something quite cool oh look at that people look at that homemade wraps and everything Noah, do you want to give me your opinion of what I've done What does it say? Edit. Oh, yeah. Very professional. Yeah, do you like it? I think so. Okay. Well, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot for a couple of them. Yeah. But I like the, the live chat on the side. Yeah, me too. Anthony Comstock was saying he didn't like it too much because he couldn't read, like it was a little too small. Oh, yeah. But I think it's because he watches on the phone, so, mm. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think I think it's, it's kind of, it's different now. It's, it's yeah. kind of cool. Yes. Nice. Banana juice for you? Oh, yeah. Banana. Oh, look at that, guys. I'm getting delivered, right? Homemade wraps with like lettuce and cheese and, uh, and extra goodies in there. And uh, homemade smoothie. I mean, you know, don't want to live like a king. Sometimes, sometimes you got to know, guys. You live like an absolute king. The wraps are from yesterday, so it might fall apart while you eat. Oh, well, listen, it's homemade. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, guys, with that in mind, I think, I think we're about done. The text at the bottom, the moving text needs to go down a little bit. My units. Yeah. Oh, extreme teller I'm glad you like it. Tell me if there is something else you think um, should be improved. But I think um, I think now it looks it looks quite nice. All I need is I really want to change this thing. I really I just I just cannot. I'm really sick of this thing over there. I need to put a screen with some nice photos. Mm. One thing I need to set up though is that I need to set up a scene when it's just us like in big screen when we do the news. Because otherwise we won't be able to record um record record those things. Uh so yeah. We'll do that right now. Alright. And we're gonna have News segment. Yeah, I know I need to put a green screen on the wall, but you got to buy the green screen, got to learn how to use the green screen, all that jazz. I just can't be fussed too much right now. It's not, yeah, you know, it's not that easy to sort all these kind of things out, so. Sometimes you want something that is a little easier. Okay, new segment, is he just that? Perfect, easy as. Zoom on us, happy time. Okay, I think it's going to be more interactive, guys. I think it's going to be more fun. I just don't know if I can change to, yeah, just a top chat. Yeah, it's going to be better. All right, guys. My wrap is completely falling apart. So I'm just going to have to be off camera to eat this thing. Hey, thank you very much for everybody that sticked around uh, while I was setting up everything right now. We did chat a few about, about a few things. That wasn't too bad. Um, thank you very much for uh, to, to Witbix which actually took the time to hang out with us as well. 
Um, and you guys had zero question for Witbix, so that's a little bit sad. But we're having a brand new live session, all set up. It is going to be extravagant uh, from now on, guys. Extravagant, I say. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah, we're still here, BNN. Yeah, I was literally just uh, saying, I'm having lunch and everything. I'm, what do you think about the setup now, BNN? Hey, look at that. I was about to leave and then, uh, then they show up. All right, what do you think about the setup right now? I would like your opinion and then after that live session is probably going to be over. And while you judge me, I'm eating Laura's homemade wrap. Okay. B plus N likes it. We got the B plus N seal of approval for that setup. Nice. Next live session, I think Winbix won't be here. Uh, Laura is going to, you know, take back her rightful place. And uh, yeah, see you guys next Sunday. Hopefully, hopefully with great success. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for the whole time. It was a very boring and solo things to do. And you guys made it all better. Bye-bye.